part by Mitsubishi and by churches. nationally renowned for its unique traditions. Since 1985, the Aggies have received acclaim as one of college football's outstanding programs. This year's team has a lofty number five ranking and a realistic shot at contending for the national championship. Today, the Aggies begin defense of their Southwest Conference title against a traditionally tough opponent. Texas Tech, next on Raycom. <laughs> it's the Exxon Southwest Conference Game of the Week. Brought to you by Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. For high performance, rely on the Tiger. And brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. By Nations Bank. By Dr. Pepper. And by Budweiser. We expect a series record crowd of nearly 70,000 at Kyle Field and College Station today as the number five rated Aggies of Texas A&M play host to the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Dave Barnett along with former All-Pro Dave Rowe and a 4-0 team, Texas A&M, off an off week in which, Dave, they think and hope that they have solved what really has been their only major weakness so far this year. And that's Jeff Granger. They found a flaw. The coaches looked at video and they believe they have found a flaw in his passing style. Now this pass against Tulsa was a perfect spiral, perfect form. The results were a touchdown. But what they think they found is that his elbow has been getting too high. Now everyone knows that Granger's an outstanding baseball pitcher. They saw it start in baseball with the elbow getting too high. The same thing was true in football. This week, they had a week off. Bob Toledo, offensive coordinator, looked at video. They took video. They made corrections. They went back to the basics. They said, hey, he had a great week. And R.C. Slocum told us he is ready. No such problems on defense where they led the nation last year. They lead the conference so far this year. And again this year, they are linebacker U. Well, they're taking over for Penn State as linebacker university. And it starts with Marcus Buckley. He's the outside threat, the sack man. Always in there. Great speed. And then you come inside to that rock, Jason Atkinson. Strong play from tackle to tackle. He flows very well. They've got a challenge today against the number one rated offense in the conference. And Texas Tech coming off a blowout win last week over Baylor in which they think they solved some problems. Well, they think they found some answers. And the answers start with Bam Mars. That young man is quite a football player. Evidenced by last week, 157 yards rushing. When he scores, they win. And his job is made so much easier by the nation's number one rated receiver, Lloyd Hill, who can really stretch a defense. Well, every coach, Dave, loves to have a receiver that stretches the defense. It opens the underneath route, but more importantly, Lloyd Hill is a threat every time he goes deep. These two were picked 1-2 in the conference by the preseason prognosticators, and the winner today will be in the Cotton Bowl driver's seat. One of the toughest places for a visitor anywhere in college football, Kyle Field on the Texas A&M campus in College Station. Tough job facing Spike Dykes and the Red Raiders today. He thinks the key to pulling the upset is to avoid their self-destructive tendencies. The thing that we've got to do, and there's not much doubt about it, we've got to really go play a heck of a football game. We can't have any, uh, you know, we can't beat ourselves. We can't... Uh, have turnovers, have penalties, and do all those things. We're going to have to play very well and uh, and extremely hard and play for 60 minutes. And if we do that, then we'll see what happens. And Dave, our Southwest Airlines team must for Texas Tech. Well, first of all, Dave, the quickest way to make a quarterback revert back to bad habits is to pressure him. Don't give him time to concentrate. No one has been able to drive the football against A&M this year. Tech needs the long ball today. 
and the crowd here at Texas A&M is a huge factor. Tech really needs to concentrate on its game plan. R.C. Slocum, with Reveille as usual on the sideline, has the number one defense in the conference, but he faces the number one offense in the league, and he says big-time talent everywhere he looks. They have a balanced offense. They, they present a great running capability with Bam Mars, uh, with their quarterback on the quarterback draws and his scrambles. And then you turn around, uh, he hauls an excellent passer, and they've got big-time receivers, uh, particularly in Lloyd Hill. So, Dave, the must for the Aggies. Well, first of all, the A&M defense plays best when they dictate or force the offense into situations where they know what they're going to do. The Tech offense starts with Bam Morris. Last week we said 157 yards. A&M cannot allow him to get started. And last year on Raycom you saw GHT1. That's Greg Hill time. 212 yards rushing last year. This year they'd like nothing better than GHT2. Those are today's Southwest Airlines team must. And we'll return to College Station with the opening kickoff after these messages. Fifth game of the year for the Aggies, but only their second here at Kyle Field. They opened at home on September 12th with a win over Tulsa. And today, with perfect conditions, you could not ask for anything better for college football this time of the year. 77 degrees, just a very slight win, which really shouldn't affect much, we don't think, out of the east. And uh, it should remain just as bright and sunny as it is right now. Terry Venetulius warming up and ready to get us underway momentarily. The Aggies have won the toss and elected to defer to the second half. So the Red Raiders will go on the attack to begin today's rendition of this series, which is led, as you can see, by A&M. But in conference games, since Tech joined the league, they lead 16-15 with a tie. Two wins in a row for the Aggies. It was very close here two years ago. They held on against a late Raiders surge and won by only four. The last win here at Kyle Field for the Raiders, 1984, in a big way, 30 to 12. And if you know anything about Aggie football, you know those folks will not sit down all afternoon. 4-0, number five in the country, looking at 12-0, they think. And this may be as tough a test, Dave, as they'll likely face until perhaps their trip to Texas to end the regular season. Absolutely, Dave. And I think that if I was Texas Tech, I would want the ball first on offense. And the same thing is true on the Texas A&M side. They love to start off on defense. Venetulius with the wind at his back down to the one-yard line. Tracy Saul, the great return man from Idaloo, Texas, up the right sideline and filled at about the 32-yard line. A return of 31, so Robert Hall goes to work. The fine junior from Dallas Carter, who is the conference total offense leader right now at 256 yards per game, a 51% passer, five touchdowns, and two interceptions. And our nation's bank starting lineup for the Red Raiders featuring the nation's leading receiver in yards per game, Lloyd Hill, the junior from Odessa Carmian. He's also second in the nation with seven and a half catches per game. And the Raiders start from their 32 first and 10 up the middle and big room for Bam Morris and a first down to the 45. Steve Soleri on the tackle of Morris. The blockers up front featuring Charlie Biggers, their three-year starter who draws the tough assignment of Sam Adams, the left defensive end for the Aggies. 14-yard burst for Morris on the first play. Darrell Mitchell, the motion man. And again, they try Morris up the middle, and this time he's got to cut back to maybe salvage a yard, and Marcus Buckley made the first hit. Speaking of Buckley, let's look at the Aggie Nation's Bank starting defensive unit. Adams, the number one recruit in Texas in 1991. They're still looking for more consistency out of him, but a world of talent. Buckley, likewise, all the talent in the world, a senior from Fort Worth, Eastern Hills, a Butkus nominee this year. Derek Frazier says, I'm one of the three best quarterbacks in college football. He may be. To the air 
for the first time, and it is incomplete on one hop intended for Lloyd Hill. Big third down play coming up here, and that is the play. I watched Lloyd Hill run that play, that little in pattern. That is the play that A&M has got to take away because Lloyd Hill uses that body so well, and Robert Hall always finds him. Look at the rushing yards at home against Baylor last week. 76 yards. In this conference, he is really the Randall Cunningham of the league in terms of being a dual threat. And with protection, the ball batted down by Eric England. Dave, that's one of the moves that A&M made this week, moving Lance Teichelman into the middle and Eric England out to the tackle spot. They felt England could rush better from the outside. The results were he was right in the quarterback's face, got his hands up, knocked the ball down. We've got the top two punters in the conference. Robert King second at 41.3 per kick, and he'll kick to Derek Frazier, and this one is gorgeous. Nose down spiral to the seventh. And Frazier manages only the 13. The kick traveled 48 yards off the toe of King, and Jeff Granger takes over, hoping, as we have pointed out, that he solved those technical problems that have that percentage down at a miserable 42%. Greg Hill, one of the top freshman running backs uh, in the history of college football last year. His first two games much worse than his last two. John Ellisor returns to the starting lineup at right guard this week after rehabbing from a sprained knee. Our Nations Bank Aggie starting offensive unit as they go from their 13. And they start Greg Schorp, the tight end, at the fullback spot in the eye, and a blown play, which has Granger keeping and spinning out of bounds for no gain. A little cross-up that time, as the Aggies now look at second and ten. On the defensive side for the Raiders, watch Hoffman. He was terrific in controlling and really shutting down Robert Strait in the inside running game of Baylor last week. Quincy White is their tackling leader. 32 stops coming into this week. Tracy Saul is now tied for seventh in the history of college football with 22 career interceptions. Out of the one back this time. And the double tight end set. And at first it looked like a nice huge hole off right tackle for Greg Hill. Then it closed in a hurry. Quincy White got there, and it'll bring up third and about five. And that's what linebackers are supposed to do. That hole opens up real quick. The running back sees it. He's right there. You see the hole. Now look, in the left of your screen, there's White. Comes along, slides along, makes a big tackle. So third, and we'll call it six now for the Aggies. Doug Carter is on the field. He has finally returned after missing a few weeks with a sprained ankle at fullback. To the air was the idea, but Sean Jackson got there for the sack. Dave, and what Jackson did was just collapse the pocket. He really didn't beat his man right off the line. He's going against Jason Matthews. He just came and just crushed him back. Watch this. He's number 98 right there in front of me. He just, just pushes him right back into the quarterback. Latest skip. You can see Matthews is still blocking against him. Jackson with his team leading fourth sack of the year and the leading punter in the conference and one of the best in the nation on a record-setting pace so far, David Davis. And he lays into this one. Saul backpedals to his 22. And a return of 10 for Tracy Saul. 61 yards off the foot of Davis. Each team has had it once and gone nowhere with 12-15 remaining. We are scoring. Spike Dykes in his sixth year, 32-28-1 for Tech, and R.C. Slocum in his fourth year as the head man at A&M, 31-9-1. Raiders from their 32 send Bruce Hill in motion and give it again to Bam Morris, and Eric England is there to bury Bam at the 35, a pickup of about three. The Raider attack so far, Dave, very conservative, trying to establish Byron Morris first, coming off his career week. Well, if they can get Morris to do that little slide just like he did there and see that hole backside, they can be very successful with the run. 
You don't think of him at 6'1", 235 as being that jitterbug type runner, though. Same thing here. The cutback will get him close to the 40, and he meets Patrick Bates. He enters the Bates Motel. Big 6'4", 225-pound junior safety who transferred last year from UCLA, and they are still cramming people into Kyle Field. They have just this moment turned away those disappointed would-be attendees. They could only get 70,000 in, and they may have it already. Well, that, does that mean it's the first 70,000 in to get in? But there's a crowd here today. Morris with the pitch. Will not get it, I don't think. Sam Adams from left defensive end. On the stop of Bam Morris. And Ray Com, pleased to welcome our viewers tuning in on Prime Network, the nationwide family of Prime's regional sports cable networks. Looking at another putting situation for Texas Tech. King with that 45-yarder into the win. Lost up another nice one. Which Frazier will allow to bounce sideways. Now a bit of a Raider hop to the 16. 43 yards this time for King. Feeling one another out so far, Dave. And with 10-29 remaining in a scoreless first quarter, we're back at Kyle Field after this. Texas A&M takes over at their 16, trying to get their number seven rank in the conference offense on track. It was three and out, first time they had it. They go from the split backs on first and 10, and on the draw play, major running room to the 27 for Doug Carter. Welcome back to the senior fullback from Dallas. After rehabbing his ankle problem, White and Wiley on the tackle as we check the Dr. Pepper roundup for the first time. Florida State ran back the opening kick to make it 7-0. Miami with 10 straight on top of the Orange Bowl. NC State on top of the second quarter at Atlanta. And Boston College, after three straight shutouts, finally scored on this week in Wisconsin, surprising Ohio State in the second quarter. Carter picked up the first down. Ryan Matthews in motion. And again, they slip it inside to Carter. He was a step away from going all the way. John Pitts reached out and made the ankle tackle on Carter. Arkansas in a world of hurt so far. Scoreless uh, this week against Georgia. Virginia early on top of the Demon Deacon. A&M using it off. We to get some people healthy again. Ellis Horn and Carter on the offensive side. And also Brian Mitchell who is coming off two broken feet since last spring. He is available today, finally. Second and five, draw play. Greg Hill gets outside in the first down. 14 for Hill. The tackle by Sean Jackson. David, what a compliment those two backs do. The last play, Greg Hill blocked. This play, it's Doug Carter. Watch 32. Bam, he kicks the linebacker inside. That allows Hill to get outside. The play before that, it was Hill who was blocking for Carter on that 10-yard run. His first two games this year, 61 and a half yards per game, but his last two, 114 and a half. Looking more and more like Greg Hill time. Flip inside, this is Rodney Thomas from the fullback spot to midfield for Hill's backup who lined up at fullback that time and was run down by White. Boy, you, you can't go wrong if oh, you're no. Toledo and you decide, do I give it to Hill this time or do I give it to Thomas this time? Well, there are two similar style running backs, or I should say similar weights and heights, but a different style. The Greg Hill is that dark style, the slasher, whereas Rodney Thomas is the bull style. He runs over people. This time, short. The tight end lines up at pullback. Hill, the setback, right up the middle, should have another first. Well, they are just ramming it right yeah. at the Red Raider defense, not well, establishing anything through the air so far. Well, it's the offensive line, and it's good vision by the back to see the slice. You the hole, I should say. You saw that time. 
Stephen Gaines got double teamed and took himself out of the play. Needs to be a little bit stronger in there, hold his position. First and 10 at the Raider 43. And Thomas with one man to beat, run down at the six yard line. yards for the sophomore from Groveton, Texas, and Bart Thomas saved six. Every coach will tell you vision. Watch how quickly Thomas breaks back to the weak side. It's against the flow. It's not where the play is designed, but he saw a huge gap. He broke it. He took it, made a nice spin there, and he's down inside the six-yard line. Doug Carter at fullback. Hill back in at tailback on first and goal. And it is Hill to the two. Quincy White, again, very active. at inside linebacker to start uh, this first quarter. Another tackle. Well, White has to step, on this, step up on this play, and he does a good job. Sees the hole, steps up, stays square. Good job bringing him down. He replaced Matt Wingo, and from the looks of things, uh, they've not missed a beat at that position this year. Aggies now to the two, second in goal. And again, they call on Hill. Touchdown. Rushing touchdown of 1992 has the Aggies on top and Venetulius out of the hold of Davis to make it 7 nothing. Venetulius, 9 for 11 on PATs this year. Dave, we talked about the style of Hill being the darter, but this time he just puts his head down. Watch this. Bam! Down goes the head, stretch across the goal line, touchdown. First blood goes to the Aggies, 7-17 in the first quarter at Kyle Field. <laughs> Aggies are ready for a good start. They have trailed at halftime in three of their first four games this year, but Greg Hill has them up by a 7-0 count as Venetulius will kick. The three-man uh, receiving core with Stahl standing as you can see, one yard deep in the end zone. Jamie Gibbs and Donald Marshall flanking Saul. Very high. And down to the four-yard line, and this is Marshall. Fastest man on the roster, but he only makes the 18. Good kick coverage that time. Greg Hill, as we said, has been a different man his last two games compared to his first two. R.C. Slocum says he's going to get even better. I think with the option last year, the threat of Bucky running the ball created more opportunities for Greg. I think uh, when we get our passing game uh, a little further along, uh, Greg Hill will look like Greg Hill. I, I'm very pleased with his work in practice. He's worked extremely hard, and he's given us great effort in the game. Uh, I think he'll end up this season in the season, though we'll have had another outstanding year. Ball intended that time for Daryl Mitchell, way behind him, deflected by Jason Atkinson. Dave, what R.C. Slocum was talking about, getting a passing game going, opening up the offense, is that a lot of teams have been cheating up. They've, uh, Rangers had a lot of problems throwing the football, so they've been cheating up eight men up into that box, what they call a tackle-to-tackle -tackle box, and it's shut down the running game. They haven't needed anything in the way of passing so far, the Aggies. And Peck, likewise, trying to get established on the ground first. Pick up to the 23, maybe the 24 that time for uh, Bam Morris. At a m scoring drive, all on the ground, eight plays at 84 yards. They've only tried to pass once, and that ended in a Sean Jackson sack on the first Aggie series. So what we thought we would saw today, we would see today, is Ranger trying to get established first, and then that opening things up for Hill, and so far it's just been the exact opposite. 
Ball audibleizing on third and five. And that one intended for Donald Marshall, who lost his footing as he made the outside cut in front of Aaron Glenn. Marshall had this football. He stumbles on the out pattern. He has enough distance for the first down. Does a good job on concentrating on the ball. Tries to pull it in. But as you said, Dave, he had stumbled, so he's trying to come back up. So Robert King will punt for the third time in this first quarter with 6.23 still to go. The Aggies play return all the way. A little lower this time. And Frazier stopped in his track at the 42-yard line. This one goes 34 yards for King. King out of little Ira Ann, Texas. David Davis from Loop, Texas. And they are the top two in punting so far in Southwest Conference play. And Davis is on a school record pace by better than one yard per kick. So Spike Dice looking for his offense, which has been far and away the best in the conference so far to establish itself the way Granger's has for a and so far. From the eye with Carter and Hill. Greg Hill heads outside and nears midfield where he meets Tracy Saul. Do you expect Tech to go to an eight-man front since all the damage has been on the ground so I far? I do. I, I expect them to have those linebackers and the D-backs creep up into the box. But I've really been amazed that, you know, Doug Carter just coming back. Had the injury, was, was out, but his blocking has been outstanding. He just got a great block on that play. Carter, the sixth year senior. He's had more than a few injury problems during his career at College Station. Rodney Thomas checks in. In the offset eye, Matthews, the motion man. Second and a long two. Granger on the waggle delivers complete first down to Thomas out of the backfield. Well, if you're Texas A&M, you're taking a big sigh of relief because Jeff Granger just came out and threw a strike to the flat to Rodney Thomas. This is an out pattern, just enough to get that first down yardage. Look where the ball is placed. Great ball placement. Nice spiral in there. The ball was thrown tight. That's got to give a little bit more confidence to Jeff Granger. From his baseball, he knows the most important pitch is strike one, which he just threw on the football field today. First pass complete for Granger with nine minutes gone. Thomas. Big chunk, six, seven, eight, and a clip on the ground. Yeah, they're controlling him on the line of scrimmage. The Tech players have got to shed those blocks and move in there. We talk about the tackle box. It's from tackle to tackle. You see in here, Tech has two, four, six people in it. A lot of teams are stacking seven and eight. When you have a running back like a Rodney Thomas or a Greg Hill, you've got to play backside pursuit. That's why eight men clogs that up. Big start and just three tries so far for Thomas. Replaced by Hill. Look at that hole off left tackle. Greg Hill inside the 10. He matches his number, biting off 27 yards. And he punished the guy that brought him down, Tracy Saul. Everybody talks about tight ends receiving. Greg Shorp gets an outstanding block on the top. That's what opened up this hole. I'll tell you this, Greg Hill knows what to do with that football when he gets down there. Not for Tracy Saul, he goes all the way in. Well, did Saul get the worst of that? First and goal, Aggies, eight-yard line, already leading seven to nothing. And Rodney Thomas squeezes inside the five before he's pulled back by Mike Lissio. And one, one difference that Tech is starting to make, they just make, made it on that play, is they're bringing those linebackers up and bringing them through, trying to create a little havoc in the backfield. We have to see if White and Brady Field can get that penetration up in the middle and stop that run back, that, that backside run. Well, that offensive line, Wesley, Harrison, Dowson, Ellisor, and Matthews. As dominant as you could be in the first quarter. From the five, second and goal. Thomas in front of Hill in the eye. Give us to Hill. Met for maybe one. Bart Thomas 
the sophomore strong safety from White Deer, Texas, on the stop. And you get the feeling as you look at the, the changes on defense, Texas, Texas Tech is saying right now, hey, you're going you're gonna to have to prove to us that you can pass. Now we're going to come up. That time, Thomas came right up on the line. You see him there, number 20, came up from his strong safety position right up on the line and made that tackle. Well, Thomas is where number 20, Bart, for uh, Tech, and Rodney, who comes out now for A&M, replaced by Doug Carter. On third and goal. Ranger with a look, and that's incomplete intended for Carter. The pressure came on the blitz by Lissio. And that bring up fourth and goal. That's, that's the defensive play of the day so far for Tech. It certainly is. Lissio is all the way outside, 91. Watch this. Fight through a block. Right there, fight through another block. Now get up in the quarterback and disrupt the pass. That's an outstanding play. His dad would kind of like that one. Mm -hmm. Tony. He used to block for the Cowboys. So on fourth and goal, then a Julius to attempt a 21-yard field goal. He's 6-7 with a long of 44 this year. And no problem on this one. 21-yard field goal. 332 in the first quarter as they fire the cannon with a 10 to nothing lead. But that, that doesn't look too bad for Tech, who had to be thinking. What do we do to touchdowns down until the Lissio play? Exactly, and they, they came out, they made some different changes on defense, and it resulted in holding them inside the 10-yard line for that field goal. That's a big boost for the defense. They've run down the field on them twice. All of a sudden, you make the changes. The changes start to work. It's good coaching. The players get confidence. All of a sudden, you start to rise a little bit. This telecast. A copyrighted presentation of Raycom Incorporated intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the video or audio portions of this program without the express prior written consent of Raycom is forbidden. Mike Dyke says, by far, last week's 36-17 win over Baylor was our most complete game since we won 5-6 to close out last year. They've had games where the offense was good, the defense was down, and vice versa. And so far today, they're both down. Well, what they need to do on this series is come out, get good field position on this return, and then get some offensive continuity there. They can also make those changes on offense. They've run the ball well inside. They have not been able to run wide. Look for Bam Mars to come up the middle. Julius will drive Saul three yards deep, and that is deep enough to accept the touchback. Maybe the finest kicker in the Southwest Conference, Terry Venatulius. From Deer Park, Texas, setting up Texas Tech first and 10 from their own 20. The latest scoring drive, also eight plays, and this one goes 54 yards. The big one was the 37-yarder by Rodney Thomas. And Texas Tech has been in three plays in a row, three, three series, I should say, three plays and out. They need a couple first downs. They need some yardage. They need to take a little bit of pressure off their defense. So Robert Hall and company back to work. Lloyd Hill and Daryl Mitchell both wide left, offset eye on first and ten. Bruce Hill went in motion. Hall on the waggle. Finds Hill for the first time today and a first down at the 33-yard line. Robert Hall will kill you more with what he does with the football other than passing. That time it's a little waggle where he comes out almost on a naked reverse. Comes out there and the defense is fooled. He's got his receiver. He's got the option whether to run or to pass. He finds Hill downfield for the first down. That is 31 catches this year so far for Hill. He already, boy, if he was to end his season today, he'd have good numbers. Sam Morris off right tackle. Fun back by Sam Adams. And R.C. Slocum says if he can get some consistency, he'll be what everybody thought he would be. Well, that was a matchup right there. Sam Adams, 6'4", 282, against Bam Morris, 6'1", 235. You want to watch a meeting? Right here. There's a bam and a bam. Good form by uh, Adams, getting low, getting underneath him. That was a collision. This meeting last year, we saw Sam Adams KO Jamie Gill and bring on the Robert Hall era quarterback for Tech. Second and eight, all alone is Mitchell. 
And out of bounds at the 41-yard line. First catch for a guy who has been better than anticipated. Junior from Miami, Florida with his 17th grab of the year. Ohio State, Wisconsin, very surprisingly close. And Georgia on top now by 10 at Arkansas. The former Arkansas head coach, Ken Hatfield, still ranked at one and two. That shows some respect. The only below 500 team in the top 25. Third and two for Robert Hall. On the roll, chase, dropped by Buckley. Sack number five, tackle for a loss number seven in the senior year of Marcus Buckley. Talk about the complete player. Good defensive players sometimes get knocked down. Look at this, down, right back up, springs back up, gets back in, gets the sack. That is a good football player. He can do that. Aggies almost gets the block that time by Ray Mickens. Fair catch dropped by Frazier. They may rule him down. At the 28-yard line, it is Aggie ball. 35 yards for Robert King that time with a sigh of relief for Derek Frazier that time. 10 to nothing A&M. They get it back with 2.06 to play in the first quarter. Well, now is the time to get good seats to the Southwest Conference postseason classic. The tournament again is at Reunion Arena in Dallas, March 12th through the 14th. Call the conference ticket hotline at 1-800-800-SWC-8 Monday through Friday to reserve your seats to Classic 18. We'll talk to Tony Baroni, the head basketball coach at AM, coming up at halftime. Out of the eye, Greg Hill this time stacked up for a pickup of only two to the 30. Stephen Gaines got there first. That's what Gaines wants to do. He wants to play along that line. Excellent play along the line, slid square to the line, made the tackle for no, well, for about a two-yard gain. But there he stopped him a little bit short that time. Gaines, sophomore from Electra, Texas, goes 300 pounds on a 6-3 print. Thorpe again is the fullback, this time in the eye, on second and seven. And that's play action. Granger, a magician with the ball taken. It is way behind Brian Mitchell and almost intercepted in midfield by Anthony Wiley. And we pointed it out in his freshman year last year. How many times have you seen a guy this polished with his ball handling skill? Well, watch the concentration that he has. All week long, he worked on keeping that elbow low. Don't allow the elbow to go above the shoulder. Good concentration. Look at the elbow, just perfect shoulder level. That's what he wants. I know the pass was not complete, but he has to be happy that the mechanics were there. Well, most of the mechanical problems have resulted in low throws, which that one was not. It was just behind him. And bring up third down. Fly is down as Carter drops it, circling out of the backfield. They are mystified at Doug Carter's pass catching problems this year. He had a bunch of drops in the opener against Stanford. And Doyle Jackson says holding Aggie. Well, this is the one you declined to bring up fourth down. Doyle Jackson's officiating crew includes Voss, Slaughter, Rogers, Pfeiffer, Nettig, and Weeks this week. The foul was holding by the offense, which is declined fourth down. On comes David Davis to kick it away to Saul. And really, Texas Tech should get their best field position. Barring another one of those 61-yard punts, they should get good field position out at the 30, 35-yard line. First one went 62 for Davis, who has upped his average by nearly six yards per kick this year. Raiders looking like they'll play for the block, which they don't get. Saul pretty much all alone at his 20. Hill turns it into about a four or five yard return out to the 24 on a 49 yard kick by David. Total offense leaders coming in. Number one, Texas Tech at 411 per game. Number seven at 321 and a half per game, Texas A&M. And you flip flop it when you look at the Aggie defense against the Raider offense. Aggie defense number one, Raider defense number seven in the league. Paul 
Hall so far through the air is only two of six for 19 yards as he takes over with 103 in the first quarter. And on the draw play, Morris to the 30. Pickup of about five, the tackle by Larry Jackson. Back up inside linebacker out of Rockdale, Texas, and Notre Dame. On top of Bill Walsh and Stanford early. Florida State with a tying field goal at the Orange Bowl. Still first half. Dave, I keep on getting the feeling that Texas Tech has got to get something going on offense. Can't rely on their defense every time. Even though their defense has stopped them twice in a row now, they need to get something started. Need to get across midfield. Need to at least get a field goal try. Morris way back at his 26 this time. England and Tackleman who flip-flop jobs this week. Tackleman moved from right end to nose guard, and England moved the other way. This offensive line is a good offensive line, but they don't get the movement here on the back side. See the penetration right there. Tackleman 58, 92 England. They get good penetration. Also, to be honest, Bam Morris decided he wanted to cut back on that play. He thought he saw something backside. There was nothing there. End of the first quarter at Kyle Field, just about at capacity this afternoon, and most folks are happy in College Station. Last year's meeting in Lubbock, the Aggies led 17 to nothing at the end of the first quarter, and 24 zip at half, so a little bit better for Tech as they look at third and eight, opening quarter number two. And Hall chased and dropped again at the 19 by Tackleman. The junior out of Austin Westwood. Now two and a half sacks in 1992. A long time on that pass play developing. No one was open. Hall had to take the ball back there. Tackleman came all the way around. They had a stun up front where Adams came down inside. Tackleman came around, got the penetration, and the sack. The latest kick by King. Fair catch, Frazier, 40-yard line. Good field position for Granger. And the offense after a kick of 40 yards. And our stats at the end of the first quarter will show you the imbalance which has been brought about by the dominance on the ground by A&M. 135 rushing yards. They get only nine through the air and still have about a 100-yard total offense in. Raiders with only two first downs on the day so far. Matthews wide right, Mitchell is wide left. Connor and Hill in the backfield, and on the draw, Greg Hill. For that cutback mode, only a couple this time. Stephen Gaines on the tackle. And that's what you have to do. Stephen Gaines did a good job that time of making Hill cut back at the line. If you allow him just to burst through, they're into the secondary, and that's where he uses that blazing speed. But if you make him turn, when he gets to the line of scrimmage, you make him turn and go around the block, you've got time for your linebackers to react. Out goes Carter, in comes Rodney Thomas. Give up a little blocking when they go Thomas and Hill together in the backfield, but who are you going to concentrate on if you're a defense? That's the problem. Mitchell went in motion play action. Granger on the waggle, looking deep. Fires caught, 42-yard line. First down grab by Short, the tight end, 16 yards. That's the connection that bailed them out in the Dixon game in Anaheim. A different pass, though, but... Same, almost the same play. Roll to the left. That's where Granger, he's a left-handed quarterback. Set up. Look at that throw. That elbow's down. Obviously, offensive coordinator Bob Toledo's going to be happy with those type of things. And, and he didn't expect it to solve itself in one day. He expected that at, at some point, Granger might revert to form, but he's thrown so seldom today that we haven't seen the problem so far. First and ten, Rodney Thomas spinning... At the 40-yard line where he's gang tackle, about half the defense there led by Chris Ory, sophomore from West Orange Stark. Well, when you're a quarterback and you're so used to success and all of a sudden things aren't going well, he's bouncing the ball five yards in front of his receivers, all of a sudden you're just, you almost start questioning yourself. And even as great an athlete as Granger is, 
I know he's questioned himself. Now they find a mechanical flaw. They change it. All of a sudden you say, hey, that's the whole problem. Now I can go back to success. And he's having it so far. Cliff Rose, the sophomore fullback out of college station, checks in on second and eight. And shifts into the high formation. Still for no game. Are the Raiders finally solving the ground attack? Well, they are because Stephen Gaines is playing through the line. He's a big man. He slid through the line that time, stayed square in the pot, right in the hole, and made the big tackle. You can watch him here. 77. Watch the penetration. He's on right at the top of your screen. Stay square. When he cuts back, there he is. Right there, drags him down. They need a big game from him because Harry Dias is out with a knee problem this week. 300-pound Stephen Gaines. And a timeout call with 11 minutes and 52 seconds to go. In the first half, 10 to nothing. Aggies over the Red Raiders before 70,000 or so at Kyle Peak. That class of 1957 is uh, assembled here today. They're honoring the 35-year grads. That Heisman Trophy stands on the bottom floor of the athletic office complex, and Greg Hill touches it every time he walks by it, hoping that a little of that will rub off by the time he leaves here. Every time I see John David, I remind him he indoctrinated me into the NFL. He ran over me. <laughs> and you still remember it is third and eight, and Granger will look and fire it deep. This one wobbles and is incomplete, intended for Brian Mitchell. The coverage one-on-one -on -one was there from Donnie Brooks, and that was not the best delivery we've seen from Granger today. No, that was a hurry-up throw, and Donnie Brooks had Donnie Brooks had the interception. One of the changes that they've made is short. Tight end in the backfield comes up. Good block out here, trying to scoot him around the outside. Now, he's not in the pass pattern. Now he raises his hand and says, hey, throw it to me. But downfield, Donnie Brooks had an interception. Brian Mitchell kept that ball from being intercepted. Davis will try to angle this one somewhere inside the 10. And it was touched at the 8. Finally blown dead just outside the 10. Not a whole lot in the way of field position today for Tech. Just the way Slocum hopes it'll be. Boston College jumping on top of West Virginia. Surprisingly close there in the second quarter. Dave, I'm still looking for that Hill and Hall connection. I think if they get if they get Lloyd Hill on the outside, put him on one on one on one of those cornerbacks. He's got the ability to beat him outside. Any quarterbacks don't mind the idea of going one-on-one -on -one against Floyd Hill. That is death to most corners. Glenn and Frazier are not most corners. Ball on the roll to Hill, and he lost it as he was hit at the 20. No catch. And that's an interesting play because if Hill had, if he had control of the football, the ground can cause a fumble. Let's see if he had control when he gets out here. See the ball yet? I don't know. I, I thought he had control of that football. I beg to differ. Okay, well, go ahead. Two sacks <laughs> so far for Hall. Moore is 33. Hill only one for 13. And the Aggies are more than holding their own on the ground with 139 rushing yards. Rangers is two for six, still not the high percentage. Second and ten, Bam Morris finds some cutback room and picks up about five or six. Ray Mickens, backup cornerback on the tackle. When you hit Morris, you know it. 6'1", 235 with about 4'5 speed. I love the story how Morris got his nickname Bam. Said his dad looked out the window one day and he had this kid, and everybody thinks of uh, the Flintstones. They said, no, that's not it. Said he had this kid and he was beating him up. He's going bam, bam, bam. 90 pound, <laughs> five year old doing that. Mitchell in motion, third down. Hall oh, down again. Atkinson and Tackleman. Well, the best move that Texas A&M may have made is moving Tackleman into the middle because he's getting good penetration. 
They've got three sacks already today. Buckley has one. Tackleman has been in on the other two. And the Raiders still with only a pair of first downs. Good to win. Nice job by Keene getting this one down to the 37 for Frazier. Wall set up on the right side down hard at the 48-yard line. The kick went 52 and the return went 16. And what a half so far for Lance Tackle. It certainly is. Anytime you're a nose tackle and you get that kind of penetration, you're really doing a great job. And that's what Tackleman's doing. Coming around the center, slipping the center, getting penetration in the backfield. And he's got two sacks. Two of the three, I should say. Great field position. Inside tech territory, 47-yard line. Red Raider defense starting, it would appear, to solve some of the running problems. They need more of the same. Down 10 to nothing, 10-10, first half. Greg Hill will be close for a first. Bart Thomas in the secondary made the tackle. Big chunk off left hand. When I played football, I hated those backs that came in there and had the vision to make that either inside or outside cut. Because you can't play off. You're a man, and that's what's happening to Tech right now. They're locking up good with them. They're getting the movement, but Hill is making that seam. He's picking, just making the right choice each time. Boy, Hill 137 yards on the ground last year in Lubbock and well on his way to even bettering that total so far today. He got nine, second of the short one. And Granger wants time. What did he see that time? I don't know. I thought for sure that's that's almost a waste down. You don't even worry about it, even if you have the wrong play called. But Granger called a timeout, burned one there. And they burned two. They're down to only one with 9.24 to play. Order number two, 10 nothing, Texas A&M. You can see it in their eyes. They're pushing to raise the benchmark of quality. And after three million miles of testing, the people of Exxon know Exxon Supreme Gasoline offers the highest level of engine cleaning, all for one reason. For proven high performance, you can rely on. Let the tiger set you free. Rely on the tiger. About 50 years ago, folks out here needed help with insurance. And since Farm Bureau's whole purpose was to help, they organized insurance companies. Now, from the outset, these companies were committed to being conservative. And the result has been a tradition of strength and stability respected across the country. Now, through the years, Farm Bureau has grown and added lots of innovative services, but that stability never changed. And stability is why you can trust Farm Bureau today. you got to be kidding. What's in is out. What's out is in. So many trends make my poor head spin. Don't sell me good taste. I know I taste good. While the best things always so misunderstood. Just give me what the doctor ordered. Just what the doctor ordered. Just give me a doctor pepper. We want it. Whoa. Just what the doctor ordered. The taste is made to order. We love it. The game of the week is being brought to you by the 1992 Exxon Southwest Conference Supreme Team, the all-conference team that will be determined by you, the fan. Dave Barnett and Dave Rowe in College Station after their second time out of the first half. A&M looking at second down and a little less than one. And when you look at this situation, when I said it was a waste down, that's the one where the quarterback can fake it in there, a little play action trying to hold the backers and go deep. Ryan Matthews in motion as they give it to Greg Hill for the first down at the 35-yard line. But when it's when the running game's working, you just keep on picking up those first downs. We want to uh, alert you today that due to atmospheric disturbances called sunspots, we may experience some breakup in the transmission of today's game. It's a temporary condition. Please bear with us. It is Dave Rose's fault, and he is doing what he can <laughs> to correct such condition. 
You're you want me to block out, out the you're sun. You're blocking it out again. You want me to block out the sun. No, I want you not to. Oh, okay. See, you don't get it. That's the problem. First and ten. Up the middle first man as Thomas backs his way inside the 30 and picks up about seven. And the difference between that being stopped for about a one-yard gain and picking up seven yards was a hand tackle there. Hoffman had him, tried to drag him down, but with that great leg strength. Just keep those feet moving. You pick up that first down, break clean. Underway, as you saw in Waco, with SMU suffering major suspensions this week for a book reselling situation that results in 18 suspensions with a 3-1 record in jeopardy. Second and four. And it is Thomas knocked backward after he perhaps picked up a yard or two. Lissio made the first contact. There's a real, and he touched on it a moment ago, real contrast in styles between Hill and Thomas. Physically, they're almost carbon copies. But how they get it done is very different. Certainly is. Rodney Thomas is one of those people. He's only 5'11", 200, well, he's 5'11", 203 pounds, but he thinks he's about 235. He tries to run over you. Hill is one of those darters. He comes up in the line, he's got those quick feet, looks for the seam, and finds the opening. Thomas in an up front, straight ahead style, reminiscent of someone like Eric Dickerson, who, like Thomas, came out of a very small high school program. Hill ran into the back of Lissio. Lissio will help out on this tackle with his back turned to the ball and a force a fourth and two. Well, what they're doing, though, that time Tech again gambled a little bit, brought those backers up in the line, and when Hill got the ball, he had to run parallel to the line. Lissio was trying to hold his spot. It was a trap on him. He held it well. They brought him up short, fourth down in about two yards. They may go for it. They have not moved the kicker onto the field. Were they to try the field goal, it would be into a breeze which has kicked up since the game began, and it would be 45 yards. On fourth and two, on the ground, Greg Hill's second effort will be very, very close. Baby had to make the 25-yard line. The ball is on the 25-yard line. He should have been stopped for about a three or four-yard loss because he got hit in the backfield. Tech played this well, very well. They strung it down the line. They got the up back. Now watch. They make him go out wide. Bart Thomas comes up there, and you see that he almost goes down. Now, he doesn't touch his knee down. That's the secret. Watch the knee. When he stumbles here, you don't see the knee go down. A lot of backs would go down. He uses the hand. He stretches. The decision is whether the ball's on the line. First down, it looks like. He got himself an extra four yards on that guy yeah. given agility. Well, wow. a lot of backs would go down in that situation. You saw how spread out his legs were. They were sliding out from underneath him. He puts that hand down as almost like a tripod and picks up the first and down. A normal human being is looking at uh, six to eight months rehab after <laughs> being in a similar position. Greg Hill, obviously not a normal human being. And the Aggie drives continues at 6.38 and counting first half. Hill again spins out of harm's way and turns what might have been a three-yard loss into a two-yard pickup before the tackle by Steve Hoffman. And that's not a normal human ability he just displayed there. That's 89 yards so far on the ground. Sophomore out of Dallas Carter. Carter has produced a whole bunch of talent we're seeing in this game. Robert Hall, for instance, uh, the Tech quarterback. Hill, the most prominent former Carter Cowboy on the Aggie side. Well, there are several. Short moves up to a slot right. And Hill again and stood up, knocked back by Hoffman. That's how he did it in controlling Robert Strait and John Henry for Baylor last week in his seven tackle performance. That's an outstanding play by Hoffman. He's over the middle, breaks through. Now watch how parallel he stands right there. Boom, he's right in the hole, square in the hole, doesn't let Hill go outside or inside, rips him down. That's one you want the coach to play back and forth on Monday when you watch the film. Neither team has converted yet on third down. Long odds on this one, meeting 11. 
on the blitz. They force another Granger incompletion. Ripping right up the middle was Anthony Armour that time, and Granger was nowhere close. This was a good blitz. It was disguised. It was a it was a slow blitz, slow developing in that the linebacker's not up on the line. When the hole opens, you'll see Armour just come flying up through there and force the errant pass. Anthony Armour, Dallas Carter, true freshman. First team all state. With 190 pounds. This will be a 43-yard effort by Bennett Tooley. And again, it looks to be more than the five-yard breeze we began the day with. That one will fall short and wide right. So the Aggies turned away with 5-0-1 in the first half, still with their 10-0 lead on Texas Tech. And we return after this from Southwest Airlines. Getting down late second quarter, 5-0-1 to play. In fact, still trying to mount any kind of a scoring threat. They take over at their own 26-yard line this time. Their average drive on the last three possessions starting at their own 18, a and from their own 40. So by that standard, Tech a little bit better off as they begin this one first and 10. Paul with a play call at the line on first down. And uh, the catch made at the 34 by Mitchell in front of Aaron Glenn. And that's a gain of about seven or eight. That was a real positive pass by Robert Hall. Call an audible on the line. Nothing boosts your spirits more than when you make a check on the line. You come out there, you run the play well, it's executed well, and you complete it for a first down. Well, for about a nine-yard loss. So gain, I should say. Tony Miller checks in. In a four-wide out look, they keep it on the ground for Van Morris, who squeezes to the 36, and it'll be close for a first. They run out of a passing set that time, and, and Bob Davey, the Aggie defensive coordinator, talked yesterday about how the, the tech offense presents you two sets of problems. Number one, a lot of different looks. Number two, a very fast pace. They come up to the line, they go with very short counts usually. They try and get as many snaps in any game as, as you can possibly squeeze in. There's David. That's Bob Davey calling the defensive signal, and you're right. Coaches look at tempo of the game. Quarterback comes up, goes through his change, and snaps the ball. But with Tech, it's a fast snap. Got a foot needed on third down. And a lot more than that is there for Morris. 42-yard line first down. Gates on the hit. Dave, one of the great stories we talked about earlier is Marcus Buckley. This play here, he's number nine. Watch, he's going to get pinned inside. He's looking for that inside gap. He bounces it outside. That's first down. That is one of the, Buckley is one of the great stories. They had a tremendous write-up about him, about his family situation with his dad, how his father passed away. It was really an emotional moment. Caught by Mitchell, but not a whole lot there. Ankle tackle was immediately applied by Derek Frazier. Ball uh, at this point has not even looked deep. No, and that's surprising because he, he's got such an outstanding wide receiver in Hill. He's got, on the other side, he's got Mitchell. He's got some good deep threats. He's probably a little bit concerned about the timing back there, but he needs to go deep every once in a while just to loosen up this defense. Four wides again, Morris pulled, and the only setback is Bruce Hill. Over the middle to Mitchell at midfield. And it'll be third and two. Aaron Glenn on the tackle, but again, it's short stuff. Well, it had to be that time. They had a blitz coming up the middle. He read the blitz very well. They found Mitchell over the middle, third down about two. They really need to keep this drive alive. Their defense has been on the field a lot. Their defense has responded. It's held Texas A&M. They need to get something going on offense. What better way to end the half than cutting the lead to three? That's what they've got in mind. And Morris should have the first as he pushes the pile up to the Aggie 47. Steve Solari was on top of the pile. I talked yesterday with Ted Unbehagen, the offensive line coach, and he said, there ain't going to be nothing fancy tomorrow. We're going to come out. We're going to play power football. We need to control the offensive line. We need to come off there with that surge. 
That was a good uh, a good example of it. They just played power football. Behind the 290-pound senior tackle, Bigger. Wobbled by Hall, who appeared to fall on it at the line. And the Raiders will burn their first timeout with 2 minutes and 22 seconds in the first half. Not too far from halftime when we look at this week's candidates for the Exxon South Coast Conference Supreme Team. We visit with Aggie basketball coach Tony Baroni and we'll meet today's classroom champions and hear from both school bands. All this plus first half highlights and statistics at halftime. Offensive coordinator Dick Winder in conversation with Hall. Well, they've got the wind at their back, so they've got almost a sure field goal try. They're sitting on second down and 12 yards now. They need to get probably inside the 30 to get a good shot at at least a field goal. And 27 yards is their longest drive of the game. That, that tells the whole story right there. By the way, to emphasize, we will show the Aggie Band at halftime. The, the folks who look for them and missed them at the Pigskin Classic did so for a good reason. Yeah, they, they weren't there. They weren't there. I know, I did that Pigskin game, and I, I remarked, I was telling... Phil Stone, the uh, fellow who did play-by-play, -play, I said, wait, do you see this band? They have an outstanding band. He said, where are they? I said, I don't see them. I said, but I promise you'll hear them. They weren't there. Already on second and 11. Sideline route again, caught at the 42. And it's Mitchell again. Lloyd Hill covered up extremely well for the most part in this first half, and Mitchell becomes his favorite target now. Clock rolling, 205, underway at Rice Stadium between the Longhorns and the Owls. Third and five. Good protection. This time he goes deep for Marshall, and Marshall has it at the 16. First down. Twenty-six yards to the Grand Prairie Feedster, Donald Marshall. And Marshall was well covered on this play. He was just not going to be denied. He came down the sideline, and he just decided that was his football. Those few fans who weren't standing are now... All ready to go for six. And that one's complete as Lloyd Hill had to go to the deck to bring it in at the five. These receivers for Texas Tech catch that low ball better than a lot of receivers. That was a tough pass. Have the defensive back come in front of you and you catch it about a foot off the ground? He snared it and it's first and goal with that much time left. Awfully hard to call audibles in this situation there in a hurry up offense. He uses the hand signal to tell them what play they're going to run. To the end zone and incomplete. Marshall was the short man. Hill was not anywhere in that picture. They went to Miller, I'm guessing. It, it was really right between Marshall and number 88. Well, speaking Tony of Marshall, let's take a look at that catch down here on the bottom of your screen. Donald Marshall's well covered. He's out of your picture now. He just comes back in there. That's Mickens covering him. And Marshall's just not going to be denied on that catch. And that is a sweet catch for a guy who's had drop problems. Drop touchdowns against Oklahoma and Oregon this year. That sets him up in scoring range. On the ground and to the one-yard line is Bam Morris at a minute 16 in the half. Bates making the tackle. And the Raiders will call their second timeout. And what you want to do in this situation is not panic. A minute 16 doesn't sound like a long time, but it is a long time. They're going to, have, they're going to be inside the two-yard line. You've got a power fullback that nobody stopped. I go right back to them. you got two downs. you got at least one down to pick it up. If you don't pick it up, you can go with the field goal try. You can also see Robert Hall fake that ball to him and roll out and have that run pass option where he runs the receiver out in the out in the flat. A lot of options to tech here. When you have uh, a guy like Lloyd Hill with so little room to operate in the end zone against such great cover people, that's all the more reason to see what you can do on the ground. Here's a great catch to set up first and goal. 
That is an outstanding catch. When you have a defender flash in front of you and you concentrate on that football, that is a big-time catch. Who does the advantage go to? Great receivers or great cover people when you got so little room to work with? Oh, there's a big advantage to the defensive team on this situation because they have someone standing back there. It's called the back of the end zone about 10 yards off, and they don't have to cover past that. From the one, it is Morris on the ground, and he didn't get it. First man there was Sam Adams. This is so close. The Marsh gets it now. He's going to make a decision, turn up, get behind him. He gets a little touch there. But look, right at that goal line, they get three, four of those maroon shirts. Bring them down. Now then, if you're Spike Dyke, do you go all this way and gamble for seven? Do you settle for the sure three? Well, I was, I was really, I was in honor of of Spike Dykes in the Oregon game when he went for the tie. He didn't go for the tie with a field goal. He went for the touchdown. But in this situation, I think you've got to come away with some points. If you kick this field goal and it's a little chip shot, you're only down by a touchdown. If not, your offense has just moved the ball and you go in on a down note into the end, into the halftime locker room. Well, what about this idea? Go to the line, looking like you're going to go for it. See if you can draw him offside. I mean, it's, it's a goal well, to go. But if you if you have to march back five, you help yourself in terms of the angle. Yes, you do. Because the angle is going to be very sharp. It's on the right hash mark. And the soccer style kicker is going to kick that ball. The, uh, the goalposts get a lot different on that angle when he looks up at him. And here comes Robert Hall. This is a surprise. He may be doing exactly what you're saying. Extra blocker in the backfield is checked in. Big 235-pound Byron Miles, along with Bruce Hill and Bam Morris in the full house on fourth and goal. Bruce Hill with a man to beat. Got there. Touchdown. What a play by Spike Dykes, Red Raiders. Wow. What a play by Robert Hall down the line. I want to tell you that option play got stopped. Within about three yards, when he made the turn, Robert Hall just pulled it out. Just an outstanding pitch. That's what made the play run. That's what made it score. I guarantee there were 70,000 people and 11 wearing maroon who thought they had stopped Van Morris a yard short of the goal. Then they look up, well, what's this 41 guy doing? And it's 10 to 6 all of a sudden. With the extra point by John Davis, up and good. 10-7 game with 51 seconds in the half. Davis. First of all, what a great call. Oh, it is. Second of all, is Spike Dykes a riverboat gambler this well, year or what? He's a riverboat gambler. You're right. He plays to win. He came down here. He said, we came to win. Watch Robert Hall on the play fake in here now right there he has to make the pitch he pitches it outside now you've got Morris out here use that big arm Patrick Bates made the attempt to stop Hill but uh, at, at, at the ankle level you won't bring down yeah. Bruce Hill well they had faked Byron Morris up in the middle and all of a sudden 41 like you say come running out there and he pitched it to him. He just pitched it to him well. Just great because when he caught the ball, he had a lot of time before he got up to the defensive corner. What a call by Spike Dice. He plays the win. Trimble Tech High School in Fort Worth produced junior Bruce Hill, who culminates the 13th play, 74-yard scoring drive. The only sustained drive this half by Texas Tech has uh, made this place fall almost dead silent. If, if you can ever feel like you're ahead in a game, which you're really not at halftime, those guys have got to feel like that. They certainly do. Their defense has kept them in this football game in the first half. Their defense has really risen to the occasion today. They had two long drives, but they stopped them three or four times when they had scoring opportunities. 
Ray Mickens up top and Billy Mitchell bottom of the screen. As Davis drives this one very deep. Four yards back. In fact, cuts back from their 20. They go with 51 seconds. With a flag down, and we, I don't think, have seen more than, what, one, maybe two flags today. Very cleanly executed first half by both teams. This is going to be a flag where it's going to be some type of a personal foul because the ball was not run back. The flag's thrown out at about the 15-yard line. Unsportsmanlike conduct on both teams. Net result is uh, nothing. Serves as a warning, and it's still first and 10 from the 20. And that's time enough, if, if you're Slocum, to think about seeing what's there on offense. At least maybe thinking about regaining some of the momentum that, that is totally gone Texas Tech's way by, by that touchdown. Listen to this crowd. There is no crowd noise. One of the must that we felt that Texas Tech had to take the crowd out of the game. Right now, the crowd's just trying to get themselves back together. First man through is Carter, who muscles for about five. Adam has only one timeout left and not using it here. And evidently, they will be happy with the three-point halftime lead. You know, the interesting play about the thing about that touchdown play is that there was never a doubt. Because when Hall came out, he snapped the ball on fast count. They weren't trying to draw him offside. They just said, hey, we're going to go and we're going to score. And he made that great adjustment down the line to pitch the ball. Couple off left tackle this time for Hill on what will apparently be the final play of the first half. What an interesting first half it has become. A&M as dominant as you could be in the first quarter and a half, and then Tech got it, drove 74 yards, and with a little razzle-dazzle, scored to make it a three-point game at halftime. The game of the week is brought to you by your Exxon dealers and distributors who invite you to try Exxon's Phase 4 gasoline and super flow motor oil. By Bud Light. By Wrangler. By the Texas Lottery. And remember, drive safely. Don't wreck your life. is brought to you by Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. For high performance, rely on the Tiger. By Diet Dr. Pepper. By Coors Light. By Texas Farm Bureau. And by Ford and your local Ford dealers. Then 7 A&M as we get set to start the second half. It'll be the Raiders kicking to the Aggies who won the toss and deferred to the second half. Billy Mitchell and Ray Mickens waiting for Davis's king. We'll see if the Red Raiders are able to sustain that momentum which they definitely took into the halftime locker room. Oh, you'd love to have been a fly on the wall in their locker room. I bet they were yelling, screaming, and for the first five minutes, it was chaos in there. Robert Hall mainly uh, short stuff through the year in the first half, but a wizard in ball handling on that touchdown fake to Morris and kicks to Bruce Hill to make it a three-point game. Best kick of the day by far by John Davis. That's two yards beyond the end line, and the Aggies start first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Here's the quarterback comparison. Ranger just 2 of 7 for 25 yards. Is that a big enough sample to know whether he's really solved that problem? Well, I think they felt that they were controlling the ball so well on the ground that they really didn't use Granger. But I did see Preston just before the end of halftime, just before half came up, Preston was up throwing three or four balls. So they may not be real pleased with Granger's stats either. They open with Hill and Thomas together in the eye formation. Tony Harrison... 
wide left. And Ryan Matthews in motion as the give goes to the first man through Thomas. And you see that high pumping style of Rodney Thomas straight up for a gain of at least nine, maybe a first down. Now, we came on saying that the Aggies uh, had three major musts. How'd they do? Well, they got a B because they have. They've dictated on defense, but they allowed that last drive. Slam, bam, bam, uh, Morris is 53 yards. And GHT, we give him an A on that. He's got 87 yards on the ground. Ten yards on the carry by Thomas, who is replaced by Doug Carter on another first and ten. Beck yet to go to that eight-man front, which has caused some running problems for Hill. Shotting, uh, shooting into the backfield. This time for the loss is Marcus Coleman, true freshman out of Lake Highlands in Dallas, who averaged 26 tackles. Mercy as a senior. He really came up fast on that corner support. That's what you want. You want that cornerback who's going to come up there and just go all out. Reckless abandon. He did it that time. Dropped him for a loss. Returned an interception and they win over Wyoming. 65 yards for a touchdown. And he stops Fred Hill for a two-yard loss to bring up second and 12. Ranger straight drop. And caught at the 44 by Ryan Matthews. First down and in. 17 yards. That's their biggest game through the air today. Wiley on the coverage and the tackle. And if you ever want to test whether a quarterback has that touch, you run the out pattern. This is a well-thrown ball. Good spiral coming out there. Right on the mark. Good complete play by Granger. And here's Granger again. Let's watch that elbow, see if it gets high. A little bit higher than normal on that play. And it wobbled a little yes. toward the end. We're, we're picking nits on a 17-yard yeah, completion. Eighth catch for Matthews. First and 10, Aggie. Pitch to Hill. Running room, right tackle. His favorite spot today. As White makes the tackle, his favorite blockers have been Ellisor and Matthews on that right side, the right guard and tackle. And Hill loves to get this ball about six yards off the line of scrimmage. See him run parallel? Now when he gets it, he puts the ball away. There's the vision. Cut back inside. Good yardage. All those eye backs love to get that ball deep. Greg Hill, fifth in the conference coming in, averaging 88 yards per game, already surpassing his average today. And he owns the Aggie touchdown. Second and two. One more time on the ground and the first down at the Red Raider 43-yard line for Hill. Back to the way they started the game. Nothing real fancy, straight ahead. Well, I think that when they went in at halftime, a and went in at halftime, they said, hey, we moved the ball well on the ground. We controlled it a lot. Sure, we let that one drive on us, but we moved the football. We bogged down a little bit. Let's see if we can come back out, get back to our game plan, establish it up front. Control the offensive line to let Greg Hill, Rodney Thomas just kind of pick their way through there. Marching smartly so far on the first possession of the third quarter. Carter, the motion pullback. Hill a pitch left this time. And they're just biting six, seven, eight yards at a clip on this drive. Anthony Armour came up for the tackle. It almost looks like that old Green Bay sweep where everybody would go running around. Everybody knew the sweep was going to come, and you know it's going to come in this game. Baylor and Texas with early leads. Texas has not lost to Rice since 1965. The longest winning streak one team has enjoyed over another in Southwest Conference history. Cliff Rose is in at the fullback spot on second and four. As Ryan Matthews shows in motion. And one more time, GHP. Greg Hill time, first down, 26-yard line. A whole lot of the same on this drive if you're the Raider defense. Well, two things happened on that play. First of all, they pinned Steve Hoffman in the middle, number 74. They nail him in there. He slides along. He's stuck right there. He plays across. 
They also shot the linebacker through on the right, and then Hill saw where the linebacker came through and just cut right back into the hole. So Hill now over the 100-yard mark, and those gentlemen have a lot to do with it. 23 carries, 115 for Greg Hill. And another first and 10. They stay with it. This time, no game. First man up to Green Hill was Stephen Gaines. A shocker in progress in Madison in the third quarter. Wow. Arkansas just has no offense this year. Second and ten. We, we talked in the first half about whether Tech would shake up their defensive look so far. Nope. Despite all of Hill's success. They are playing him on it. He was a workhorse on this drive and stumbled at about the 24 and then fell forward for an extra yard. And you would almost think second and 10. I mean, that's a sure passing down. And still A&M comes out and runs. Now, they need to get to Granger back there, get a little bit more confidence, throw that ball, throw it with accuracy. They've had to rely so much on the run in the past, it's almost like they're, they are, their offensive scheme is reverting back to those habits. A&M on third down has averaged needing about six yards. Tech has averaged needing about four yards. And the Aggies have not picked up a third down conversion yet. 0 for 6 on the afternoon. They need nine here. And it's Hill on the swing pass. First down, 13-yard line. Donnie Brooks on the tackle. Well, a very safe play on that call. What they did is they, they ran their receivers deep to run the secondary off. You'll see here the two deep men. They run them to run them off, and they run a little underneath screen to Hill. He picks up the blocks by the linemen here. See, so just dump it over the back. Now he turns around. Look at those big linemen out in front of him. That's Dowson, Harrison, Wesley. They're all out in front getting those blocks. Hill says uh, coming into this year, his goal, one of his goals is to have one game with as many receiving yards as rushing yards. His first pass today, first down, Mitchell the motion man, Thomas first man up, and he's inside the 10. So they finally give Hill a breather and give it to Rodney Thomas, who's tackled by Sean Jackson. And one of the people that has to be happy to be back is number 51, John Ellisor. There he is, right guard, and watch, he just sticks in there. That's good leg drive. Ooh, that's what you call a plus two block. And you get your man on the ground. A pancake. That's a, a pancake. It's an offensive depleter. A depleter. <laughs> All of the above. Thomas got four. Second down. Thomas again slips inside the 10. Lost it. Picked up by Tracy Fall. And the Raiders take over at the 19. First turnover of the day, and it could be a huge one. That is a huge one. Spike Dykes will tell his defense, never quit. I don't care where you are on the field, don't quit. Big hit here. Look at the ball just comes flying out, way up in the air. Tracy Saul, he knows what to do with it. One block, and he almost breaks this all the way down the sideline. Mike Lissio caused the fumble by Rodney Thomas, and the Raiders take it back. This had been an error-free game until Mike Lissio was able to rake his arm across Rodney Thomas and cause this fumble. There he is, number 91. He rakes the ball out. Come stall into your picture. This is as good as an interception. Now, I'm serious. If he had gotten one block, he was down the sideline. If they had blocked that one man, he'd have picked up a wall of blockers. Mostly Greg Hill on that drive. He ends the drive tackling Saul. Raiders, first and 10, they're 19. With Dan Morris, the long setback. And Hall under-throwing Darryl Mitchell at the 31-yard line, second and 10. Eric England giving Hall an assist as we grade the Texas Tech Mus. Well, they have gotten to Granger a little bit. They have one sack. He was only two of seven at halftime. Quick strikes. They haven't done very well on quick strikes except that one long drive. Not very quick. Tune out the 12th man, I've got to give him an A. They got down there, fourth down, one foot to go, 70,000 plus screaming here, and they scored. Paul with 
goes to visual audible at the line on second and ten. He's got Hill deep, full layout, caught at the 40. The nation's leading receiver stretches for a 20-yard game. He keeps on playing the way he is. He may make the Dave Rowe all-conference team early. This is a great play. Little quick in pattern. Look at the concentration. Lay out there. Look at the football. Bring it in. Again, well-thrown ball. Look at the layout. Good concentration. Once it touches your fingers, he believes it's his. They are finally this year getting a chance to see what he can do when he's healthy. Injury problems each of his first two years. Bruce Hill turned back as he tried to reach the uh, line of scrimmage, and they may give him the line, but no more. Well, I tell you, the national title would uh, go by the wayside if they don't pull this one up. Absolutely. And it's a stunned crowd, too. I mean, the crowd is stunned right now. They're getting momentum on there. They've got a lot of enthusiasm, but they're seeing their A&M team really have really tested today. Better than a two-touchdown favorite coming in as Hall is obliterated inside the 30. Buckley first, and then his friends arrive. Big players make big plays, and Marcus Buckley in the outside. Nobody touches him. Look at that speed. Good concentration. Gets in there. One happy young man. Fourth sack of the day by the wrecking crew. Buckley has half those four. I thought it was an amazing story about... He talked about going to offense one time, playing peewee football. He said, I lined up at offensive tackle. They told me to tackle the guy with the ball. He turned around, tackled his own man. My own guy. Back to off, back to defense. Coach, he had the ball. Robert Hall airs it out deep and incomplete. Donald Marshall step-for-step -step coverage that time. And the Red Raiders do not turn the turnover into an extended drive. Dave, the two cornerbacks here, Frazier and Glenn, play as good a football as you'll find at cornerback. They run one-on-one -on -one coverage about 90% of the time. That was just great coverage down the line. As you set up the return. They won't get one. Tremendous Red Raider bounce and no, you don't get to do that. If you touch it at the 13, that's where it's down, not at the 1. 6.32 to go, third quarter and a three-point game. And we return after these messages from Coors Light. Then 7 a.m., 6.32 to play in the third quarter. They will take over at their own 13-yard line after a 57-yard punt by Robert King of Texas Tech. And all tied up in Atlanta in the fourth quarter. Number 21, NC State, and number 23, Georgia Tech in the ACC showdown. Gross and Thomas in the backfield. And Rodney Thomas slices off, big yardage off the left side of the 27-yard line, 14 yards first down. Let's check out some other news from around the league on our Ford Southwest Conference update. We begin at Rice, where Trevor Cobb is the number five ranked rusher in the country, averaging just under 137 yards per game. He's taking on Texas today. And then after they finish, they'll get ready for Houston and Southwest Louisiana. A home game for Houston, but it's at Rice Stadium because the Astros are in the Astrodome tonight. SMU missing that many players because of their NCAA suspensions today in their matchup at Baylor. Rodney Thomas breaking two tackles, another first down. Great pursuit by Quincy White from inside linebacker to prevent even more. Gain of 15 yards on the running play. Thomas giving Hill a nice free to TCU's Derek Cullors, who we saw return 197 yards for a touchdown last week in Dallas, leads the nation by virtue of that return. His average nearly 35 yards per return. Texas coming into that game at Rice today with the record 2016 winning streak in the series with the Owls. 
First man through Gross stretches. Ball was loose well after the tackle made at the 44 by Anthony Armour. And if Rice pulls the upset today, not only <laughs> yeah. do they make history, they make fashion history. They for certainly do. We Fred understand Goldsmith. Fred Goldsmith has told his players that he will shave his head if Rice beats Texas today. You know, that, even if you're a Texas fan, that's almost that's reason. Almost enough. <laughs> well, maybe not, but... Well, as the kids say, not. Not allowed. Game a six for Cliff Row, second and four. And the extra effort again. Backing his way to the 48 was Thomas. Chris Ori made the stop. Third and short. I'm really surprised Granger has not mixed up some passes. I know they're controlling the line of scrimmage, and they've been able to get those first downs. But it's been a long time since we saw him throw that little dump pass, that little screen. He's just not throwing the football. Now when you've got third down and one or two, and you've got the running back, the caliber that they have, you know, it's a, that's a, maybe an easier decision, but you still think you're going to mix it up. Well, they're both well over 100. And Granger is four for nine. So if you're wondering why so few passes, there's your answer. This is a Texas Tech timeout call with four minutes and 33 seconds in quarter number three. Our score, right where we were at the half, A&M 10 to 7. Boy, some people, uh, thank goodness, just can't be away from their television even for one glorious autumn afternoon. In, well, including, I just, well, I thought I might do an update right here. Hey, you know, we look pretty good. I'm you got bad, the huh? baseball game. Oh, that's baseball? I like that picture. He's probably <laughs> making a lot more than I am. 10-7 <laughs> mm, game. Not that shocking, I don't think, for the Raiders. Their people were telling us yesterday, watch for an upset. They thought they were emotionally trying to pull one. Well, the series, is, this series always has, has had good games. Another good one today. Thomas will, I don't think, get the first. Staggered toward the sideline by Stahl. He needed right at one yard and did not get it. And David Davis is on to kick it away. That's the kind of open field tackle you like to see from your safety. When he comes up and hits that back and doesn't allow him to break free for a yard or two, drops him fourth down and a foot. Excellent play. Now, what does he do? He doesn't go over and rest. He has to go back and return punts. One of the best. He led this league his first two years in punt returns. Third last year, second this year. That one is not down. No, it's a touchback. They couldn't quite corral that loose ball. But what you want to do on this play is not carry the ball into the end zone. You want to swat the ball back. And they didn't. They carried it into the end zone. Next week, our Exxon Southwest Conference Game of the Week will take us to Rice Stadium, where we will see whether it's bald Fred Goldsmith bring his owls into the meeting with SMU. Check your local listings. For a noon kickoff central time, if you can be with us live. Halftime now at South Bend, Indiana. Still second quarter is Baylor wiping up on SMU and Waco. Halftime in Houston. Picking up on Texas. Mitchell in motion on first and 10 Raiders. 4.15 to the third quarter. Hall will keep it. He's got a lot of room. Slides to the 32. First down. Could have been much worse for the Aggies. It sure could have been. He looked up and saw a sea of green. And then the quickness in the secondary finally closing. That one ends in a tie. Boston College came in with three consecutive shutouts. They give up 24 today. West Virginia blocked the field goal inside the final minute to preserve the top. Inside give Bruce Hill. Gang tackled. Strong enough to carry the pile up to the 35. Adams and Tackleman in on it. Wisconsin continues to lead Ohio State. When was the last time that series went that way? And Georgia adds another touchdown at Arkansas. Five ranked teams in the ACC. That, again, has got to be a first. Hill turned what should have been no gain into a pickup of four. Paul 
Ball finds Hill out of the backfield, out of a Frazier tackle, out of another one, foot race, and Bates finally saves six. But Hill to the 36, a gain of 28 yards. The difference between this going all the way is an outstanding effort by, by Bates to come across on the play. If he quits on the play, they score. Good time back there, line giving a lot of time for Hall to look downfield. Finds Hill, now he's down the sideline. Now Bates is going to come into your picture. He's number 29. Nothing but green grass. Ahead, here comes Bates. He doesn't quit on the play. Big play by the Stacy. Another weapon emerges for the Red Raider attack this week, and it's Bruce Hill, the fullback from Trimble Tech High School. Flags down in what has been a virtually penalty-free game, and it looked like Charlie Biggers moved from right tackle. Interesting, though, the way Biggers moved off the line, they were going to pass again. Now, Spike doesn't like that. He doesn't like mistakes. He said, we can't beat ourselves. Ball starts. Offense. Still first down. And they have it. No, they haven't. They've, they've, they've been very, very good. That's why they're in this football game. They have played a great football game today. And they're playing against a great football team. Best against best today. Offense against defense. And he'll almost made another stretching grab. In fact, this would have been his coup de grace if he brought this one in. But this one was just almost impossible. He had it for a second, though. You could see the way the ball just stopped when it hit his hand. Looks more and more like Michael Irvin in the making, doesn't it? Watch this stretch now. Low touches his hands. He's got it. When he comes down, he doesn't come down with control, but close. Second and 15. Beats the blitz, but they did hurry him into misfiring for Mitchell, and it'll be third and 15. Even when they don't get the sack, the wrecking crew will uh, take their toll one way or the other, usually. They come on you fast. You see that mountain of, uh, of maroon coming in there. It's awfully hard for that quarterback to sit back there and pick up anybody other than his prime receiver. Had he been able to look downfield, he had Donald Marshall coming on a, a slant across the middle, and he was wide open. Mike Honeycutt into the game. He's wide right. Mitchell inside of him. Hill wide left. Hall looking over the middle. And it's low intended for Morris and incomplete. Third down for both offenses are just about a washout today. Well, they have a category they call hurries. And that's what A&M is doing right now. They're making... Texas Tech hurry the football. That time Marcus Buckley from the outside made him hurry the football. What do you think of a fake punt here? No, I don't think a fake punt. I think what you want to do is punt him down inside the 10, 15 yard line and hope that your defense can stop him and get good field position. Obviously, Dykes agree. Sideways hop. Not bad at all. They will uh, mark it out at the 10-yard line. 31 yards. And they do pin the Aggies. As always, happy to have our uh, Prime Network viewers along with us this afternoon from Kyle Field and College Station. More gray hairs for both those gentlemen today. <laughs> Well, they are two, two of the finest coaches you would want to meet. Different styles, but uh, just outstanding results. 2.45 in the third. Carter and Hill in the eye. Greg Hill time again. A stone wall after a pickup of two. Every time they hand it to uh, somebody in a maroon uniform, he's fresh. Whether it's Hill, Thomas, Gross, Carter, they all get breaks. But now is the time for Granger to pass the football. That time you could see Texas Tech starting to creep up in that box. They had eight men inside from tackle to tackle. And now it's the time for Granger to fake play action where you draw those linebackers up, you bring the ball out, look downfield, and you find the open wide receiver. The injured Red Raider is uh, number 74, Steve Hoffman. A key figure up front, nose tackle. Senior from Shirts, who's north of San Antonio. 
He is walking on. He's number 74 in there. Probably gets a leg caught underneath him. Now, he has to stay square in there because the play is right up in there. He gets a leg bent back up underneath him, it looks like. He has really had a fine football game today. He and really Stephen Gaines have really been the tight guys up inside there. Jackson coming from the outside. Pitts has put some good pressure on. Their defense has played very well. Second and a long eight, 225 in the third. A scoreless third quarter so far. Play action, Granger swings to Thomas. And Thomas met by Damon Wickwear, the linebacker, and his linebacking mate, Armour. And it'll be third down. When Granger turned around, this was play action, fakes into the line, and when Granger turned around, he had Lissio looking him right in the nostril. And he picked up the, picked up the yardage. He made a nice pass, good adjustment. Boy, such a visual image you see. I used to love looking down the nostrils of the quarterback. And then I was close. Third and four for Granger. Quick drop and incomplete intended for James McKeon, the sophomore tight end. Sean Banks, I think, gets a hand on this one. And hunting will be David Davis for the Aggies with a minute 38 in the third. Well, that time, Banks is, Banks is the backer. He's got the tight end off the line. He's number 46. You're going to see him. Just get a hand right on the right of your screen. Look, just get that hand in and knock that ball away. Big play. They should get good field position now. Great day for David. Ball at his 37 yard line. Wind has gotten stronger as the afternoon has progressed. And it will knock this one down at the 40. Ball knocked down at the 42. The kick went 43 for Davis. But as this afternoon has developed, this is some of the best field position that Texas Tech has begun to drive with. They have that much time with the wind at their back. How big a factor? A big factor because Robert Hall, since he stopped handing the football off to Bam Morris, is passing the football, looking downfield for Lloyd Hill. And I think that with that wind at his back, it's got to be a big plus. Looking to go to the air again. Dan Morris. Dragged to the 44 by Eric England. Good job by Hall that time as he knew Buckley was bearing down on him. And waited to get Buckley close enough to him that he couldn't bring down the, the receiver. England showing great pursuit at 264 pounds dragging down the, the smaller, quicker man. And on the backside, that's Charlie Bigger, 68. Good pass blocking against Chatham. Keep them away from there. Keep that big body up there. Keep those feet wide. That's a plus block. And we got two, second and eight. To the sideline for Hill, and he will be close and probably have a first down. Knocked out by Frazier. They still haven't gone for, for everything yet. No, they haven't. Them. And you kind of get the feeling that they're doing a lot of out patterns, and those are setups. But on that play, the blitz, the receiver has to take that route because he's not going to have time to get deep. Well, uh, officially 183 empty seats today. A series record at Kyle Field, 69,817. Largest crowd ever to watch the Aggies play the Raiders. That one delivered to Mitchell and immediately meeting him from behind was Bates. You feel it when Bates sticks you at 6'4", 225. Dave, you've mentioned that they haven't gone deep to Hill all day. What is happening is that Robert Hall, when he takes the ball, he backs out from center. And what he's seeing is a host of maroon coming right up the gut at him. He's got to be, he's got to pull that ball down quick and find the underneath person. He hasn't had enough time to go more than 15, 17 yards downfield. Six-yard game for Mitchell, second and four. Hall on the roll. Pump fake. Now goes Steve, and he's got him. Lloyd Hill gives the Raiders the lead. <laughs> 
What a difference time for the quarterback makes. That time Hall came out on a little boost to the strong side. He avoided the rush, and he allowed Lloyd Hill to get downfield, and Hill put a move on the quarterback, Glenn. That was unbelievable. Glenn just came up and just stopped. And he fake pumped him one time. Hill went deep, and Hall had the time to look downfield and find him. With one second left in the third quarter, John Davis can make it 14-10 Pep. And out of Honeycutt's hold, he does. So they go almost three full quarters setting up this very play. They certainly do. Now down the bottom of your screen is Hill. It's an out pattern. Now he fake pumps him right there. Now see when he turns up, he also has time. Look at the distance. Glenn bit on that fake pump. Thought he was doing the out pattern as they've done all day long. Hill turned it up. Hall had time. Result, touchdown. You want to see the results of a quarterback or reaction of a quarterback? This is it. Yes, finally. <laughs> Heisman pose there? I don't know. It's a little high step, though, isn't it? Lloyd Hill's third touchdown reception of 92. By far his biggest. And a little down in the mouth, perhaps, on the maroon and white sideline. Well, down in the mouth, perhaps, but this Aggie team has come from behind of three of their four games this year, so they're used to being in this position. In fact, R.C. Slocum said, hey, that's been good for us, because we haven't blown teams out. So I, don't, I think that what you're going to see is I think you're going to see a poised A&M team come back. Good point. He said yesterday, if we had four blowout wins, I'd be worried coming into this one because I don't think we'll have a blowout. Sure enough, they don't. They trail by four. As Davis said, uh, it's time five yards beyond the end line. Still one second before the third quarter comes to a close. What do you say? That's for you, Mom? <laughs> Real close to his mom. And true to form, you can't get a word out of Robert Hall. No matter what That's happens. Right. That's true. Got a little dance out of him, though. One more snap in the third quarter is in the book. Greg Hill, four yards. And that is the end of the third quarter. Scoreless until the Hall Hill connection with one second in the period gives the Raiders the lead. The Saddle Tramps excited about the possible upset, but we've got 15 more minutes to go at Kyle Field. Record series proud on hand and most of them are absolutely stunned. But this Aggie team is a fourth quarter team this year. And they open this fourth quarter, second and seven. The pitch to Greg Hill, first down, almost a bunch more. 32-yard line, and Quincy White made the saving stuff. You talked about them being a fourth quarter team. They've outscored their opponents 42 to eight in that fourth quarter. Behind in three of their first four games at halftime. They led at halftime today by only three. Trail by four coming into this fourth quarter. But this is where the 12th man has its most vivid effect. Greg Hill head on hit by Stephen Gaines. No game. Let's take you through our scores uh, this afternoon. Eight play 84 yard drive culminated in Hill's two yard touchdown and so far that is the only Aggie touchdown. They led 10 to nothing after Benetulius' 21 yard field goal. And then very late in the first half out of the full house set Bruce Hill took the pitch, took it in. Three point halftime game, four point Peck lead thanks to the Hall to Hill 41 yard bomb. Second down and nine. Carter is the fullback. Mitchell, the motion man, brings your play action. He wants to go to the tight end court, and he drops it. And it's third and nine. 
No problem with the pass that time. No, the pass was there. Short dropped it. He tried to catch it on his hip. The ball hit on his hip and bounced off. I was looking at Granger's reaction when he did it. He just took his hands and almost like fists and just put him down like he was really frustrated. Now, great athletes love situations like this. I'm sure Granger likes this. Hey, give me that ball. Let me throw it one more time. I know I can get it. Wilbert Diggins is on as an extra wideout. And Granger for the first time today out of the shotgun. And this time Short will hang on and have the first down. Out of bounds at the 45, 13-yard pickup. He went right back to him. Well, that's confidence on your quarterback to go back. Short's the tight end. Here's your secondary drop. You're going to see Short come across the middle and right on wide open. The broken coverage there. He picks up. Now, instead of going out of bounds, he gets the first down. And the different reaction from Granger on that play. Yes, that's it. Now we're going. I think that kind of emotional surge yeah. he gave in the Stanford That's game. exactly what I was thinking of. Pitch to Hill. Lissio hit him after a pickup of two. Big day from Mike Lissio. And I will never forget when Granger went into that huddle. He had been benched in the third quarter, was doing terrible, and he runs into that huddle, and I mean he looked every one of those linemen in the face and said, we're going to score. And that's what you want from your quarterback. You want a quarterback that takes control. You also don't want a, a person like Greg Hill come limping out of the football game. Rodney Thomas replaces Greg Hill on second and eight. Long count by Granger that gives to Thomas. Gaping hole, first down, Raider 41. Well, we don't know how long he'll be out, but that's how much There's they no lose. They off. lose nothing. Watch the cut. Now, at the point of attack, it's going right over Ellisor there. Now, watch right there. He cuts back. You see, he sees that little seam to the backside. Picks up a good block there by Harrison, 55, and he picks up the yardage. But that's just great vision, and both of them had it. Not often do you have two running backs that complement each other like Thomas and Hill. Surprise so far in Norman. Rodney Thomas again, breaking the first hit. Picks up eight or nine. Into the secondary, the tackle made by Marcus Coleman, and at the Orange Bowl, Deja vu all over again. Miami by one in the fourth quarter. Georgia Tech Scott Sisson for the seventh time in his career has kicked a game-winning field goal. He breaks the heart of the Wolfpack. He gets set to take on Texas Tech next week. They kick that field goal with one second, I believe, on the clock. Second and three. First man through Doug Carter. First down to the 30. And the Aggies have answered this challenge with more straight-ahead physical running. Well, they're doing what they do best, and that's drive the football. Boy, a lot of huge matchups around college football and some, some surprises. That's not one of them, obviously. This could be. But the Aggies showing they have some other thoughts in a long time. It comes from 14 to 10 down. 11.43 to go in the game. First and 10. Rodney Thomas right side this time. And even when the Raiders sniff it out pretty well, they get three, four, five yards. Another tackle by Coleman. Well, that time Thomas broke to the outside, but I thought he had a hole back inside. Watch here up front. These linemen have got to be tired on defense. There's Gaines getting doubled, but Thomas comes bouncing to the outside. The reason, Hoffman got a good, good pop in there, and so did Quincy White. They make them bounce to the outside. When they do, there's someone standing out there waiting to get them. Thomas one more time. Not quite for the first, and now the backwards third, because they'll probably give him the 21-yard line, and the line of game was just inside the 21. 135-yard day for the backup tailback. Well, who does about everything, even unloads the truck when they get back. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell that story. <laughs> they said that when they came back from a game, he was down here at 6 o'clock in the morning helping them unload the truck. This was not after any game. This was after the Tulsa yeah. loss last year. Showed up at 6 a.m. No big deal. I used to do it in high school. Will not take a compliment. Absolutely selfless. Still up the motion, man. They need two. They call on Rodney Thomas, who will take it in. Mr. Everything. Thomas made a tremendous cut back to the weak side again with that good vision. I sound like an echo going back and forth about it, but he makes the right decision. Burst through the hole for the score, and A&M has answered Texas Tech with a touchdown. Then Atulius for the extra point. Davis holds, and the kick is no good, and he has missed his third extra point this year. Oh, and that's huge because that means a field goal will win. Thomas gives them only a two-point lead. Watch the top of your screen. You're going to see the hole open up. There, look at the move back. Almost gets touched in there. Then he sees that hole and just bursts through it. Here's another view of from ground level. You see him just plant on that turf and just cut back in there. You're not going to bump him down. Nobody locks his legs out, knocks his legs out. Best day of the young career of Rodney Thomas. He gives the Aggies the lead, but a long way to go. Today's game is being brought to you by the 1992 Exxon Southwest Conference Supreme Team. Be sure and cast your vote at Exxon. And if you're tempted to vote for a backup, here's a nomination. Rodney Thomas, who came into this game for the year, having gained 157 yards. Today, he has 19 carries and 157 yards. But Venetulius, who is now 9 for 12 in two late pieces, he leaves the door open for a Red Raider field goal, and they can regain the lead if they can manage, manage that. Gracie Saul is driven seven yards back, and Robert Hall will take over at his 20. Well, the bus story, the unloading the truck story, is one indication of the uh, the character and the humility of Rodney Thomas is another well, great story. The other story that we understand was true, that he was at a an all-star game and got a ring and a watch and found out there were two sick boys in his town, and he went and gave the ring to one, the watch to another. He read about it in the newspaper, and then they came and they said, hey, we want to write a story about it. He said, no, that's not important. Quite a football player and quite a person. First fan through, Bruce Hill and a couple. Second and about eight. And they're waving those, those white towels now. A little visual added to the audio for Texas Tech, but they've tuned it out so far. Very, very they effective. They really have. And what they need on this drive is they need to move the football, perhaps get in field goal position. There's a lot of time on the clock. It's not time to panic for Texas Tech. Paul will look for the waggle and fire and almost intercepted by Atkinson. And if he got it, he would have taken it in. Jason Atkinson We'll look at this one over and over on video and just kick it. He certainly will. He had, a, he had an interception right in line. I don't know who he was throwing to unless he was throwing to Mitchell out there. Atkinson's a great story. His dad went here. I think his grandfather went here. He said he's been coming to this field since he's been two years old. This one caught. And Lloyd Hill has a first down at his 45-yard line. Michael Hendricks ending a 23-yard connection. When you watch Robert Hall drop back, he can throw dropping back better than anybody you've ever seen. He throws his ball off the back foot. You're going to see Hill, number 18, come into the center, breaks the zone. 
And there he is, just looks that ball in. He's got good field position now. He may lack something, but I don't know what it is. He is the total package of wide receiver. Bam Morris turns that one into a pickup of about five. And what you would like to do if you're Texas Tech is run that clock down. Take a lot of time. Let the quarterback look up. They're almost getting in field goal range. The wind is going to be somewhat of a factor because it's in their face. But they're running that clock down. It's now down under eight, nine minutes. You want to run it down, pick up a couple more first downs, and don't give A&M a lot of time. That wind began five miles an hour. Much stronger as the day is worn on. Check with me, Paul. Paul makes it at the line. Fires over the middle and has Mitchell for the first down to the 33. 16 yards as he beats Frazier. Their post patterns, and what Mitchell does is uses his body so well, once he makes that break inside, all he has to do is look up and catch that football. A Stanford comeback in the third quarter at Notre Dame. And Washington has first blood against number 20 Southern Cal. Washington does not play UCLA. That might be the toughest matchup in the Pac-10 all year. Miami adds a safety. They lead Florida State now by three. Sam Morris. For four or five yards. Raiders now with the Aggie 30. That time when Morris looked up, he saw number 53, Peter Allen. He saw him go through a hole. He got right on his tail and ran right up through there. But if you're on Texas Tech on the sideline, you're saying, hurry up, clock, keep on ticking off. Well, two years ago, they faced down this type of challenge by Robert Hall. In fact, one of his first big contributions, in fact, for Spike Dykes came here. Almost pulled it out. They got turned away at the end and lost that four. Option pitch, Morris. To the 27-yard line, Larry Jackson and Patrick Bates combined for the tackle. And we will look at third and about four, 7.23 and counting. Where is the 12th man? They are silent right now. Well, they are. They're concerned. A lot of time on the clock, though. As I said, if you're Texas A&M, you're saying, hey, go ahead and try your field goal now. Let our offense have it back. If you're Texas Tech, you're saying, just get us one more first down. We'll get that ball down inside the 20-yard line. And a sure field goal from that distance. Blitz coming. Hall just got it off in time. And it is caught, yes, by Mitchell. First down at the 22. One official says a catch. And uh, Doyle Jackson is going to agree with him. First down on the tip drill play. I saw one come in saying, no, it wasn't a catch. But the other official had a better view of it. The ball bounced off the defender. Watch the ball bounce up in the air. and Watch Mitchell. The ball is going to bounce off here. Up there. Now Mitchell just comes across. And the official on the backside thought it was no good. The one in the front said, yes, it was a catch. Hendricks deflected it. Great concentration by Mitchell to bring that one in. Blitz comes again. Going for everything. And incomplete. Quite a battle in the corner of the end zone between Lloyd Hill and Aaron Glenn. And everybody was looking for interference there. One team saying it's defensive interference. The other one saying it's offensive interference. But neither one of them really does anything to the other one to keep him from the football. That's inside position. There's a push back. That was almost a catch. I thought they both interfered. <laughs> yeah. Kind of looks like the official said that. Bought to a draw. Second and ten. Draw play Morris. Inside the 20. Still going. 15-yard line. Bring up third and a long two. Atkinson brought him down. When you look at that clock ticking down. Now it's going to be under six minutes. When this drive started, it was near the 10-minute mark. Keep in mind... If they take the lead, how little A&M has accomplished through the air today. And the less time they have, the more they would have to rely on the unsteady passing game. Morris again. So Larry drives him back. 
The mark will be everything. I think he's a little short. So Larry first, then Bates, and then help. They'll mark him at the 13. He needs just outside the 12. Don't be awfully close. If he had been able to fall forward, he would have picked it up. But A&M got a lot of people there, didn't allow him to fall forward. They may have, in fact, held him for that for, for the fourth down. Dykes down two. Now you don't with think 5:32 to go. Now you don't think Spike Dykes is going to go for this on fourth down, do you? I don't know no. anymore with him. <laughs> but no, you wouldn't think so. Well, they're saying what six eight inches. I hear him yelling field goal. We can hear in the sideline microphones he yelled field goal or uh, field goal. Now if this were last year and they had Lynn Elliott, it's automatic. John Davis is four for six with a long kick of 40 this year, so he has been steady. And uh, what he would look at here would be about a 30-yard effort, and that's exactly what they'll go for. The 30-yard field goal for the lead with the angle to the right. Well, it's the best angle for a right-footed kicker. Up to the right. It's almost like it's a little slight. Out of Mike Honeycutt's hole. And he is good. The crowd goes quiet, but there's a red section over there. I believe they brought 5,000 fans from Tech from Lubbock for this game, and they all cheered. Did Dyke know it? Add it all the way. There's a man who has given Texas Tech the possible upset margin of one point. John Davis from Brandon, Mississippi, and there is the man whose missed extra point left that possibility open. I can promise you he's saying to himself, offense, get me in position. I want to redeem myself. The Aggies with five minutes and 19 seconds trail by one. And if you're wondering, Jeff Granger has 71 passing yards today. But that could be enough to get it done on the ground. Mitchell and Nickens back even into the win. Great leg strength by Davis as uh, Mickens will settle for the touchback. They've got 80 yards to go and 519 remaining. And again, Dave, the situation for AM, don't panic. Stay calm back there. A lot of time. Five minutes and 19 seconds. That's a long time in a football game. Even if he doesn't throw a pass, that's exactly. They can run the length of the field. So they need to stay in the game plan. Do what's doing, do what's worked well for him. And whether he's had a good day or a bad day, his confidence never seems to waver, does it? No, it certainly doesn't. Greg Hill is back in. You saw him limp off on their last series. Takes the give. Picks up about six to seven. Gains an armor on the tackle. That 12 play drive ending with Davis's field goal eating up 451. They took over with about 10 minutes to go. We're under five minutes now. If you're tech, you want them to get up slow. Just let them fall down. Just hold them. Let them make them work. Make them work three downs for a first down. Harrison right, Mitchell left. On second and four. And Granger off play action looking to waggle. He will keep it for the first down to the 44. Eighteen yards for Granger. And that's an in this is an instant replay of the Stanford game, which led to a winning field goal when Granger faked. He came back out to his left, looked downfield, put the ball away, and picked up big yardage. And put that other arm over the ball, kind of just kind of protecting it. Don't fumble now. Hill and Thomas in the eye. And it's Rodney Thomas. His career day continues with a gain to the 49 yard line. That gets him near the 160 yard mark. Greg Hill has 138 yards. 
Well, that's shades of the uh, Pony Express back in the Dickerson James tandem. Not many South Coast Conference teams or anybody else in college football looking at that kind of production from guys who, for the most part, play the same position. Carter replaces Thomas and blocks for Hill on the sweep. He dives into Red Raider territory and they'll give him the 49-yard line. The clock rolls at 3.38 to play. John Pitts on the tackle. That's what you want to do if you're tech. Make them use all three downs. An injured player on the field looks like maybe Hill down. Hill it is. And when he limped off before, it, was, uh, it looked like a slight knee problem. And we won't guess here, but it does stop the clock with 3.33. Well, the first question people are going to start asking is, how good is Venetulius out? How far has he hit this year? What's his, what's his real accuracy range? 44 yards. That's, and that's a good kick. That's from about the 27-yard line. And uh, keep in mind, if it comes down to that, he does have the strong breeze at his back. Well, that's a big factor. That, that wind is blowing straight from our left to right. The, the, it's right at the back. It's not even a crosswind. It's right straight at the back of the Aggies. Well, Hill started to make his way to a sitting position and now has sagged back into a prone position, and they have called for a stretcher for Greg Hill. And if, if you have ever heard 70,000 people go absolutely silent, that's what we've got right now with a timeout at Kyle Field. Moments ago, the standing ovation as Greg Hill was brought to the sideline on that stretcher. We, uh, as we said, won't guess what the problem is, but we do know that he limped off uh, on the previous series, and it may be a recurrence. You see his numbers for the day, 141 yards on 32 carries and a touchdown. And Rodney Thomas, of course, replaces him on third and three. Rodney Thomas close with that second effort. If they give him the spot, I think he's got it. But if they don't give him the second effort and call him down, I don't think he does. Good discipline that time by Texas Tech not to be drawn offside. You can see Granger came out with a long snap count. A long snap count trying to draw him offside. He didn't. Thomas may have made it with this second effort. Right there, he's hit, but all of a sudden he launches. He just kind of leaves himself back. He wasn't all the way down. Short, though, Dave. He didn't get it. Quincy White held him back, and they go for it on fourth and one. And Carter, first down. Two thirty-two to play, and still all three timeouts in the Aggies' back pockets as Carter on the dive on fourth down keeps this drive moving. Again, Venetulius's range has been 44 yards in his Aggie career. So they're not real close to it yet. Open was Carter, and Granger led him too much. No, but Dave, with the wind at their back, there he can kick probably eight to ten yards farther. So you're looking at if he gets to the 35-yard line, they've got a shot at it. They bogged down and unable to get it. He can still kick from about the 35-yard line in. So they're looking at nine more yards. Yeah. Houston. Yeah, I think that they've got they've got two minutes and 13 seconds. Obviously, they want to get as close as they can, but they're getting close to his range. They do need to pick up about. Probably about eight to ten more yards. Deja vu in Miami, Florida State missed another field goal at the end, and they lose by three. All day, Granger. Short reception to the 43-yard line. Carter hit by White. And the clock will stop on a timeout at 2.02 remaining as the Aggies use their first timeout. Boy, another strong afternoon for Quincy White. Senior out of Midland League where Spike Dykes used to be the coach. This one comes down to the nub when we return. Dave Barnett and Dave Rowe at Kyle Field with that much time remaining. 
And the Aggies talking over a third and eight. The number five Aggies, the undefeated national championship hopeful Aggies who may see those greens melt before their eyes if they can't pull this one up. Their last home loss, 1989 by one. Their last loss, regular season, at Tulsa last September by one. And Granger avoids the sack somehow. Five short, first down, 28-yard line. Talk about a play. Watch Granger. He is going down, right? Wrong. He's not going down. This would have ended the play. Unbelievable. Granger somehow stays on his feet. And this time off the back of John Pitts and a flag down. They may get Pitts for interfering with Rodney Thomas. Mike Lissio is thundering in and they'll wave it off. No flag. That's 61. Let's give some credit. That's Dusty Beaver. Previous play, he had the sack, he thought. This time, Lissio almost had the sack. But an incompletion second and 10 with 1.41 to go. Stanford coming from behind at Notre Dame in the third, and it's all over in Madison. That's the biggest surprise in years in the Big Ten. This could be the biggest surprise in a long time, the SWC. Rodney Thomas to the 20, third and one. They say that Rodney Thomas is the biggest Greg Hill fan on this team. He's his backup. Those aren't backup numbers today. And he is having to pick up for his injured teammate. First man through, Groot. Still going first and goal. Cliff Groot. This is just determination. Groot got hit on the line and just kept his feet going. He just drove through there. The clock is down to a minute and six seconds. Going to be first down. They're in great position for at least the field goal. But I don't think that R.C. Slocum just wants the field goal. Doyle Jackson in conversation with Jeff Granger where they spot the ball. Of illegal substitution by the defense, which is declined. First down. It is first and goal because it's just inside the 10-yard line. They took over after about a Six-minute drive by Texas Tech. One-minute mark of this one. Rodney Thomas is inside the five. Now, this is just like an extra point. And we know what happened on the last extra point for A&M. Second timeout call by Slocum. We take it with 50 seconds remaining, and Kyle Field up for grabs. So is this game. Today's game is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. By Nations Bank. By Dr. Pepper. By Ford and your local Ford dealers. And by your Exxon dealers and distributors who invite you to try Exxon's Phase 4 gasoline and Super Flow motor oil. Dave, I go back to one play that really set this entire drive up. It was the play when Granger almost sacked by Dusty Beavers on the backside. Most quarterbacks would go down. Granger stayed up, found his tight end. For the first down. Kept the drive alive on third down. And the drive sets up second and goal from the four-yard line here with 50 seconds remaining and one more Aggie timeout. They go from the I formation with Gross and Thomas behind Granger. Granger. 
Frazier on the roll, almost intercepted by Marcus Coleman. He was too close oh. to Crane. Oh. Coleman will look at this picture for the rest of his life and say, I had it. It hit him right in the hands, right in the face, right in the chest. Watch Coleman, number 12, coming to the left of your screen. Jump up in front of the quarterback. It's a touchdown if he doesn't look where it hits him. Oh, if he could have come up with that ball. But he's too close. <laughs> You're right. What a play. Well, not many people can react and bring that one in. So third and goal from the four. Rodney Thomas, maybe the three. And they will leave it in the hands of Terry Venetulius with the clock inside 30 seconds. I wonder why they don't call timeout to give their offense in case he makes it just a, just a little hope. But they're going to let it run all the way down. And you know Tech is going to call those timeouts trying to ice the uh, kicker. You know, you almost hate to see somebody lose today. This has been such a well-fought game. Texas Tech came in here. They said, hey, just give us a chance. We'll show you what we can do. They played a marvelous football game. And they get the timeout at three seconds. Enter Mr. Venetulia. That's a tap on the back saying, don't worry, I got a lot of confidence in you. But you better make it. It's a one-point game because he missed the extra point. He can wipe that out of the book and keep the Aggies national championship hopes alive. Now what he wants to do is stay out of the huddle. Don't listen to anybody. Get over there, practice a couple little swings with his foot, go through his normal motion. Forget about the impact of this kick. Forget about three seconds. You're down one point. This is for the victory. This was the miss PAT earlier. Watch it hit the left upright. He just hooks it. Boing hits the upright and bounces out. And this kick is going to be almost from the exact spot. It's maybe a yard longer. But center of the field. And Venetulius, no doubt, replaying that miss in his mind over and over again. Well, he's trying, probably trying to forget about it. He's probably saying just follow through, keep your eye on the spot, do all the mechanics that you know that you do so well. Take your two steps. Slide over right, look up at the goal post. Now Tech's going to call timeout. They're going to ice them. Oh, yeah, they've got one more where oh, that yeah. came from. Let him think about it. He needs a little bit more time to think about how important this kick is. That's a good move. Bring him over to the sideline. Let a coach just kind of pop him on the helmet and say, listen, concentrate, keep your head down, follow through. The junior from Deer Park, Texas. Waiting to decide this thing one way or another. Exxon Southwest Conference Game of the Week next week. The surprising SMU Mustang. Visit right. We hope you can join us. Check your local listing. So you really think a college junior can forget that all this means is everything. Well, it's awfully hard to do. But what you want to do is you want to so concentrate on the mechanics of the kick. Keep your head down, looking at the spot. Hope it's a good snap. Watch the rotation of the football. Watch the ball as it comes back. Watch the hands of the, of the man catching the ball and putting it down. There's so many different things. That helps you forget the importance of this kick. Daryl Red will snap it. David Davis will hold it. And then Julius will try to win it with a 21-yard field goal with three seconds remaining. How about another timeout? How about one more timeout? <laughs> no sense taking him home. That's what you do. That's smart football. You hope the kicker gets tired running out back and forth to the sideline. Now, what can they tell him if they haven't already told him over there? Well, nothing much. They just now this this time it's just bring him over there. That's a good idea. Take a drink, because I promise you his throat's dry. How hard is it to win if you're on the road at Kyle Field? Well, they've lost one and tied one here in the conference since 85. There are eight conference losses since then by an average margin of 3.3 points per game, and they have not lost by more than six, and that was at the hands of the Red Raiders 
five years ago. And October 6, 1984, at our very first Raycom Southwest Conference telecast, Ted beat him here. Then Julius can prevent a repeat of history. I don't think we'll have to describe this one. I think we'll know if it's good or if it's not. step from the penthouse to the outhouse and back to the penthouse and he made that big step they had him up on the shoulders of the player watch this all the mechanics keep your head down follow through it's just an average kick when he looks up it's not an average kick When he looks up, everything they have played for this year is still on the table. That's all that meant. And Florida State ahead of them with a loss today so they can move on up. And how frustrating is that for a Spike Dykes team that could not have played much better? They couldn't have played any better. They played a marvelous football game. A lot of people had them two touchdowns or better underdogs coming into this game. And that is the character of a football team that played their heart out. No shame in that loss today. You want to win, you want to win desperately. They had a whale of a chance. They pull it out. They had one drive to do it, and they did it. Jeff Granger's Aggies, 19-17 winners over the Texas Tech Red Raiders at Kyle Field. Of course, the question everybody wants to know is what was going through Terry Venatulius' mind as he kicked that, as they called timeout three times. Well, let's find out. Right from the horse's mouth. Terry <laughs> Venatulius. Yes, sir. If you can hear us. I can hear you, yes, sir. All I can right. hear you. Can you tell us what goes through your mind when they call timeout after timeout? You're left to think about everything that that kick meant. Well, that's what I try not to do is try not to think about it. Uh, things like that happen. You know, you come back and you miss one. You know, you, know, you want to try to bounce back and make the next one. You try to, the best thing to do is try to stay focused. Uh, think about what you got to do. Think about, I thought about what, like, how I do it in practice and, you know, steps and consistency and, you know, all, everything else just fell in place. And I'm just, thank God, and I think I'm just glad it went through. Terry, what did uh, R.C. Slocum and your special teams coach say to you? Hey, he said, hey, uh, they just tell me, uh, you know, you got ice water running through your veins. Uh, you know, that's the way you were born. That's the way you're bred. And uh, you, know, you can do this. I think, you know, we always have to come up, uh, overcome obstacles in our lives. And that was one of them, you know, missed extra point of, put us down by one and uh, Phil go put us up ahead for the win. We're just seeing the celebration afterwards. Did you fear for your life on the bottom of that pile for a minute? Well, you got about 3,000 tons or pounds or whatever laying <laughs> on you. I mean, it's kind of scary after a while. I had a couple of blockers on me protect me, but other than that, I was all right. <laughs> Terry, congratulations. Thanks for the visit. Thank you very much, sir. 
The man who pulled this one out for the Aggies. Pulled it out. That's an understatement. What a kick. He did all the mechanics. Did them all right. And the man who was helplessly watching from the sideline, R.C. Slocum, now joins us. You really had to be a psychologist with all the timeouts and the, the time that you had to try and instill all the positive thoughts into Venezuela. I told him this is what he'd been waiting for. Uh, if you're a kicker, you've got to relish these moments where you have a chance to really show what you can do. A lot of times those guys don't get the credit they deserve that, that belongs to them. This is a great chance to say, hey, I'm a part of this football team, and, and uh, I count. And I, I felt I had a lot of confidence in Terry. Uh, he's made every clutch thing we've ever asked him to do, and I couldn't be happy for him and for the team. R.C., there was a huge play, third down. Granger almost went down on a sack from Dusty Beaver. Tech's nose man. He came back out and found his tight end. That had to be his biggest play of the day, too. It did. There were a bunch of big plays. You know, there in the fourth quarter, we had a couple times where it looked like we had him stopped and we had chances to intercept balls and didn't do it. One time we deflected one and they caught it. So you just have to play through those things and know that if you keep hanging in there, we'll have some breaks, too. And certainly Jeff scrambling out and finding the tight end was a big play. RC, what can you tell us about Greg Hill's condition right now? I think he's got, uh, he had a five bruise and just got it hurt again. I think he's going to be fine. Well, you've got to be feeling fine right now. Congratulations. Well, we, 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 we've got a deal going with the concession people here. We've we got a little cut, cut on the popcorn and Cokes that we sell. We're trying to keep everybody here for the whole ball game. And plenty of alka too. Yeah, Thanks, right. RC. You're welcome. Yeah, man. Wow. 1970. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He's right about that. I don't think one person left this stadium. If they did, they missed an unbelievable football game with just a fantastic end. Either way, it could have gone either way. Both teams just played fantastic. Well, the engineer to the game-winning drive now with us, Jeff Granger. Jeff, uh, let's pick it up. First of all, where you're almost sacked, you you almost go down with Dusty Beavers on your back. How'd you turn that into the completion to short? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I you know I felt the pressure backside and uh, I tried to duck out of it, and luckily enough, he just went right over the top, and uh, I stepped up in the pocket and. Uh, you know, saw Sharp wide open, and, you know, fortunately enough, he was there, and, and, and I got it to him, and he caught the ball and made the crucial first down. Jeff, we talked about today that you had made the difference in the passing with the elbow up high, and that all week long, uh, you studied it, you looked at the video, you went back over, Bob Toledo, your offensive coordinator, made the corrections. How'd you feel out there? Well, uh, I felt real comfortable. Uh, you know, I worked on it not only a week, but two weeks. We had it off week, so... Uh, they filmed me every day in practice, and uh, we went in there early. You know, I went in there early to watch the film, and uh, basically what my problem was is my back leg was coming over like a pitcher, and, uh, you know, I wasn't really dragging it. So today I tried to concentrate on just, just basically throwing the ball, not trying to overthrow it, and, uh, you know, just try to hit the open guys. And uh, fortunately enough, it, you know, I was successful, and, uh, you know, we got the, the game-winning drive, and, and then until his field goal. Jeff, congratulations. Big win for you. Thank you. Jeff Granger and the Aggies pull it out. At the final gun on the 21-yard field goal by Terry Venezuela.